<laughs> so he says, I'm Mary Poppins, y'all! <laughs> <laughs> and it was genuinely a punchline. It was. It was. <laughs> Technically, that works. Oh. Welcome to Big Dang Toke, or whatever it is you lot call it Big Dank memes. Big Dank, big dank memes. There's, Sweet Dank memes. There are no Dank memes. Here. I am um, Vine Star Chris Johnson. I am social media and not quite 30 under 30 luminary. <laughs> Big damn Matt. I'm not any, either of those things. Oh, I don't, I don't think... I don't, I mean, is it possible to still be a Vine star? What happened to the Vine stars? I wanna be a Vine star. I guess they extended their shit comedy to more than six seconds and moved to Instagram, didn't they? Facebook video. You don't use Instagram very often, do you? I try and avoid it. That's probably for the best. I... The, I keep getting in the suggestion page, like the search page and everything, um, videos. It says, like, you know, a post you might like. And I see it's a video. I'm like, all right, I'll watch. And it's the same joke. It's two guys or a guy sees girl's hot ass, goes to talk to girl. Girl says something that throws them off. Yeah, two, I've seen a Two obscure rap yeah. tracks play. That's the video. And it gets millions of views. And these people get sponsorships. I'm flown to Abu Dhabi to shoot sketches. It's just a lot of wank. What I'm basically saying, Matt, is why aren't you a woman with a tight ass? I thought that myself. And why aren't I some scrawny times. American guy with a series of baseball caps and a vague knowledge of obscure rap? Are you wearing the baseball caps all at once or in sequence? I think I think I'm wearing them all at the same time. But based on the angle you're looking at me, the cap makes it look like you're seeing my face. So I'm sort of like I'm sort of like Manny faces. Yeah. Um, in a way. Because you have many faces. Because I have many faces. <laughs> what are we talking about this week? What's on the menu? Because <laughs> uh, I'll happily talk about this this new entre- uh, uh, enterprise we're going to... How um, many wristbands <laughs> can you wear at once? How many laptops does he have? He has all the laptops! <laughs> he fucking loves tuna! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so. Yes. Right around the corner. Oh. Trailer drops. Yes. Four. Yes. The Netflixes, the Marvels, the Defenders. <laughs> Disney's. Disney's. Netflix's, Marvels, the, the Disney's, Defenders. The Disney's, the Marvels, the Netflixes, the Defenders. Yeah. And The Dark Tower from the Stephen King's. The Stephen King's, The Dark Tower. The Stephen Towers. King's, The Dark Tower. <clears throat> All right. Yeah. Uh, They're four. out. They came out. They Those dropped. trailers have dropped. On my face! They fell. And they're trickling down my throat. No, that's the blood. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they did land right fell. on the bridge of my nose, yeah. so, yeah. <laughs> it's a real fucker. They they did, they, they dropped like a piano in a vaudeville film. <laughs> a vaudevillian skit. Like a piano in a waterfall. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk Dark Tower first. Let's talk Dark Let's Tower. Let's talk Dark Tower. With... I know about the Dark Tower. I've actually read the books. With the delicious Idris Elba. He does look delicious in this, doesn't he? Uh, as the gunslinger. And, and... The um the the finger licking Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, that is a great description of Matthew His McConaughey. Finger licking good. He is he is the Kentucky <laughs> Fried Chicken of actors. He's like, damn, I know too much is bad for me, but hell, if it ain't tasty, hell, <clears throat> hell is other people. Uh, this looks interesting. <laughs> um, just drop that there. Yeah. There it is. Um, hell is other people. This. This looks interesting. It doesn't look like they're doing a straight adaptation of The Gunslinger, which is the first novel in the series. It looks like they're going off in their own direction, which... If anyone who's finished the series will know, raises some interesting implications about where this particular story is going to go. Without without giving away much, uh, and as as I believe is not your intention at all, because you want me to sort of witness it, for experimental reasons as they dish it out. I suppose. If I want to read the books one day, I'll, I'll be clean and unaware. Um, but in non spoilerific terms, what is the basic premise of the Dark Tower series? Oh, yeah, I can get into that without spoiling anything. Yeah. So, basically, <clears throat> Roland Deschain is the last uh, of the Gunslingers, which is like a knightly order, which used to look over, mid- which used to look after Midworld and, and, and sort of... Not Midworld? Like, not rule, not rule, but enforce and sort of bring justice and all Keep that Keep an eye on giant, stuff. giant turtles and everything, yeah. you know. Then there was a yeah, basically. That's not entirely untrue. Giant giant turtles, giant bears, turtle um, lambs, spiders that might be clowns. Oh, there's so much. There's so much. <laughs> there's so much stuff going on. 
Like, you have such sights to so show you. There's so much stuff going on in the Dark Tower books. It's the, the, you can go deep. Um, <laughs> you can go real deep. Uh, so, but Roland's <laughs> the last one. The the order has fallen. The line of Arthur Eld is broken with Roland, um, and he is chasing the man in black, responsible for the death of his mother. But there he is. Yeah. Oh, hello. See, he's coming. They're after coming him right first. now. Uh, he, the money the, was... the budget for sound effects just shot through the roof know, this week. I know, I know. That was the best soundboard you've ever got from a charity shop. Um, <laughs> Draw back for that, dear. Yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> you don't know what it is, dear? Great. Um, <laughs> so, anyway, uh, he's chasing the man in black, who was the man responsible for the downfall of Gliad, which was the which was the city of the gunslingers, uh, the death of his of his of his parents, and all that stuff. The book, revenge story. The book literally opens with the line. The man in black fled across the desert and the gunslinger followed. That's how the book starts. That's the so not, I mean, that's the blurb. Yeah. Stick that on the back of the book and there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Ro- at some point, <laughs> Roland is trying to get to the Dark Tower. Right. Because he, da- the Dark Tower is the, the linchpin of all existence. And someone or something is trying to topple it. So Roland has to get to the Dark Tower to save it. That's basically it. So it's 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 sort of following the typical like quest structure of you know hero villain kind of. MacGuffin must get to one place to stop a thing, but with that Stephen King kind of sensibility. Also, this is about alternate worlds and parallel dimensions. I was going to say this is less his horror stuff, isn't it? More his it's his Lord of the Rings. Yeah, it's his fa- it's his sci-fi fantasy bent. Yeah. Is there still some sort of like d- does he carry some of the the more horrific stuff oh, with it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the trailer Absolutely. certainly teased some kind of bestial stuff going on, some kind of creature. Like, Midworld at this point is basically post-apocalyptic. <clears throat> okay. So there is elements of that and, and, a, and a wastelandish element to it and, and mutants and things. There are all sorts of monsters that live both in the worlds and the space between them. Mm-hmm. Um, and you get to see some of that. It looks like they're bringing some of the stuff from later books through because... In the first book, he does meet Jake, who's the young boy in this. And they go on I was going to ask that. about that, yeah. actually. Like, is, is is one of the plots to do with a young kid who who sees visions of yeah, it and everything? That's all in the first book. But in the first okay. book, you don't you don't get <laughs> Jake's point of view on what it was on what his life was like before he came into Midworld until later books. Right. Okay. So they're kind of merging some stuff out of yeah. order. And also, he, he he leaves at one point and then comes back again later. And there's some gaps to fill in there. I suppose, well, Hollywood so, machine-wise, that's yeah. not the worst decision. And Roland never really comes to Earth... In the books. In Not in the first book. Okay. He sort of does in the second, but he doesn't actually physically bodily come to Earth until much later in the series. Whereas the trailer's sort of basically saying, Oh, guy out of time! Here but we go! There is there is a narrative... <clears throat> there, there is, as a, what is this KFC? But if they'll get yeah, hands out it's Sony there'll be a stupid scene where he's trying to get to grips with something mundane for comic effect Possibly. regardless of the tone of the film at that point although the action looks pretty good in the in the fucking trailer it does look pretty cool there's some serious gun through and reload there, there's mm. shots of him uh, spinning the chamber and just dropping the bullets in at yeah. like super speed and the, all the speed loaders on his belt and it looks the shit <laughs> And um, visually, it's got some pretty striking stuff yeah. going on. It does look nice. Like, again, like switching between those sort of the desert landscape kind of places, and then like the, you know the middle of New York. I think it's yes, yeah, yeah, where yeah. it was. And it's just switching between that. What are we thinking about um, Elber and McConaughey? Like, are they? Yeah. Do they look like sort of what was in your head brought to life? Because obviously, there's a lot of illust- illustration um, well, of these characters, in... like for both just the. Like you know, covers and things like that, but also graphic novel adaptations. And I stuff think like I think that. McConaughey fits the the written descriptions of of the Man in Black slash Randall Flag slash Walter Old He has many names. Um, pretty, <laughs> I go by many names, basically. Yeah. Um, pretty <laughs> fucking well. Um, and um, it's weird because in the books, Roland is is explicit, <clears throat> not explicitly, but very strongly implied to pretty much be Clint Eastwood. Right, yeah. In in those spaghetti western movies, <clears throat> in terms of what you're picturing, they want you to picture Clint Eastwood, yeah, like that era. Of... But in terms of personality and demeanor, I think Idris Elba's done a, from what I've, the little we've seen, mm. I think he's done a pretty fucking stellar job of, of of inhabiting that character 
if not in the same way you're describing the books, yeah. certainly in, in the way he has is, is, is as a character. And I think it's a really interesting choice for it, and I'm looking forward to see what he does with it. When are we going to get the teaser poster of just like the image of him? Because that, there's that. I'm trying to remember who it is. Who's it who did the picture of like, the gunslinger in that very sort of filmic poster version? I, th- I can't remember if it was for a graphic novel or. There's, a, ver- there's a version of it in The Mist. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm thinking. When are we going to get a poster of him like that? Oh, it's the Star Wars guy. Probably soon. What's his name? Is it Ralph McQuarrie? I might be wrong. No, Ralph McQuarrie was That's in the concept of Star Wars. I think he was dead by the time the mist came out. I'm, tr- I'm trying to figure out what the movie posters okay. are. Uh, movie posters! <laughs> movie posters! Just Drew something. Drew Struzan. Uh, Drew Struzan, that's it. Yeah. yeah. Um, when are we going to get a, a Dark Tower-esque poster in that style? Soon, probably. Beautiful. It's out in August. I know, and this is the first we're seeing of it in, and I, I, in I, May. I was, it was really worrying that the, we hadn't seen anything of mm. it and it's out in August. This trailer's put some of my fears to rest, but it could be shit. Sony, we don't know Sony yet. does do that, though. We don't like, know. Ghostbusters, the trailer didn't arrive till late March for the movie that was um, early August. Uh, it was June, September? June, July. It June? Is it that early? It was, it was early summer, yeah. Shit. June, July. So Sony oh, tend to yeah. be like that, really. Sony are a, Sony are a, sort of a weird studio. Um, but I'm really looking forward to seeing how this plays out and seeing what they do with it. Um, pardon me. Um, as, as anyone who, you are pardoned. <laughs> yeah. There's a narrative, for many crimes. There's a narrative device built into the books that would allow this to be different and make sense. Okay. So, yeah. It's... Okay. It, I, I'm, I'm interested to see what, we do with, what they do with it. Now, what about Defenders? Looks better than Iron Fist. <laughs> That's. I mean, to be fair, that should just be the tagline on the yeah. <laughs> on the promotional material. It's better than Iron Fist. It's better than Iron Fist. Um, first off, looks fun. I found this out the other day. Eight episodes, not thirteen. Yeah, I mean, we knew, Smart I mean, it was going to be a short freaking one. decision. Yeah. yeah. Smart decision because you need to savor this stuff. You don't want it to be a lag in the series that should feel like the Avengers of television. Savor it. <clears throat> you don't want it to feel like Age of Ultron. Just take a before small bite. we get the assemble. Just take a small bite. And just roll it around your mouth. Yeah, you like that, don't you? And yeah. just let it play over your tongue. And, oh. and feel those flavours sort of oh, yeah. sort of dissipate and, and spread. Make sure you get some on the sides of your tongue. Oh. Really, 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 really pick up those those, those bitter oh. edges and get some sweet on the centre of your tongue. Oh. Oh. All right, nice. you just spoiled it. Oh. No, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't do that. Don't, 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 don't. Underpensy. <laughs> um, I, I, yeah. The first thing that came to my mind because we sat down and watched it together before recording was less hand going forward, please. Like, I hope this is the last stand of the hand in Marvel Netflix because I don't want them to be the thing. It's great to watch Daredevil kick the shit out of ninjas. What if the hand were the thing, though? Like what if they? What if, what they, if all... they were the thing from Adam's family? Just a hand, yeah, just skittering the around. Thing. What if they all merged to become <clears throat> Ben Grimm in his giant orange Rocky form? No. <laughs> what if they're all <laughs> the thing from the movie? The, the thing. thing, and it's prequel. Wait. The thing. Just checking. Yeah, I wanted to make sure. <laughs> wanted to make sure. But I wasn't going to uh, say remake. Movie Bob. Does, it's not a remake, guys. Did you see Movie Bob's out of fix Fantastic Four and put them in the MCU part I watched that one. this very morning, actually. That was a great start. Yeah. Like, make them time travel displaced so that way they can work in the 60s aesthetic. Because it they is so the cool. In. I think that's why, this, apart from the obvious reason of Marvel not owning the film rights and property anymore, I think part of the reason they're not really making any Fantastic Four books at the moment is because what, what do we do with them? I think they're waiting for a really great pitch. I, you know what? Thanks to his Silver Surfer run, when Dan Slott wraps up on Spider-Man, put him on a Fantastic Four mm. book and put it in that Silver Surfer sensibility of it's just about fun adventures and doesn't really have anything to do with the wider universe at I, all. I, I, the Silver Surfer's basically Russell T. Davis' Doctor Who yeah. with the Silver Surfer. Yeah. And it's great. Yeah. And that would be great with Fantastic Four to be of a similar thing. I just think. like a, a romp. A I dimensional think, romp. I think for 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 Dan Slott to handle a book like that, though, you'd have to bring him off Spider Man first, and he's gonna die before he gives up Spider Man. You have to you have to pry Spider Man from his cold dead hands, from his cold dead webs, his cold dead gleeful hands. <laughs> he's a gleeful man. He is a gleeful man. And um, um, yeah, I, I, yeah, he's he, that would be, that would be a good fit. I think. I think he's got a, he's got a good sense of fun that you could bring to. Uh, to a Fantastic Four book and still have it some 
some gravitas to it. But speaking of fun, Defenders. Defenders. We are so bad at this. Our Defenders, 45 episodes, and we're no. still tangent like motherfuckers. That's what the podcasts are for. That's true. It's the tangent cast. That is true. We are taking you on a stream of consciousness. Big damn tangent cast. A stream of big, tar-like, sticky consciousness. Tangents are my middle name. And your boat's going to get stuck in it, stuck in the tangent river. Yeah. Anyway. And we're going to emerge <laughs> <beneath> the <waves. laughs> Um, um, I, I, but at the same time, uh, if this is going to be like Avengers and the Marvel Cinematic stuff, this is about getting to know our leads as a team. Ninja so, blank ninja minions is fine. All about you. <laughs> so, God, we looks pretty scary. We still don't really know she's who she's playing, do we? <laughs> no, I mean, look at present. She has a swipe. Uh, we don't really know who she's playing. I know there's there's been some suggestions that she's playing a gender-swapped version of a character from like Iron Fist stuff back in the day, like a hand, one of the hand leaders. Possible. Um, there's also rumour swirling that she's Mephisto. Nah. It's it would be weird to suddenly introduce supernatural stuff to these four characters who haven't dealt with supernatural stuff. Well, the closest we've got really is Jess- uh, some... Jessica Jones with like um, Kilgrave, obviously having superpowers. There's suggestions of supernatural stuff in Iron Fist. Yeah, but the eyes of a dragon in a flashback are not enough, good sir. Yes, I've seen that clip. Um, um, no, there's more to it than that. <laughs> I, I, what I'm saying is, it'd be weird to go. Oh, by the way, we're introducing supernatural stuff in this world. By starting with the devil. Like, that would be a bit much. Yeah. Unless you're sowing the seed. Like, at the end of the series, there's a suggestion that maybe she's something more. Because then you could have different actors play the part as well. You could have Mm. people switch switch out. Um, Which would be nice. Because you know we're going to be busy with that um, Neil Blomkamp Kalian movie soon. Yeah, she's gonna be. She's gonna have a lot on the plate. Oh, with the, thanks. Uh, I mean, I'm with excited. That it's now never gonna get. Made. I'm excited for Covenant, but damn you, Scott, you killed something. We Apparently, all wanted he killed to it see. before it even had a script. It's mental, and it was in pre-pro, mm. but I think it was more like expanding on the design work and talking with effects teams and stuff about like bringing it to life. So, because yeah. he, he had a bible written, up. he had like a spec, he had like a spec script, but not a full script. Oh, okay, because um, he sat down with Scott Weaver over dinner and like told her the story, and that's why she went, "Yes, yes, I'll, I'll do, do this." It. And we all rejoiced. And then really Scott went, uh, what about Prometheus 2? And we all went, fuck. What about all the five alien movies I want to make? What about the seven alien movies? I- what about the 17,000 alien movies I want to make? Despite the fact that I'm nearly fucking 80. That's all right. James Cameron um, <clears throat> will definitely get round to Avatar 2. Yeah, I promise. We'll 2020, see apparently. Those. Whatever. But you know what's coming this Whatever. year? The Defenders. Yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Luke Cage's colours are a big part of his dress, like, sense. Loving Luke costumes. Cage. I'm loving the fact that the, yellow, the yellows just... and the blacks and the greys are in there. That looks really cool. Give me all that Luke Cage. Danny Rand's wearing a lot more green. Uh, you know, there's lots of green woven into his things, so we're getting a bit of the costume feel. If only they can weave some character into his dialogue. But I'm dish. Hey! No Daredevil in costume in the trailer. We Not see yet. the costume, but no Daredevil in costume. More improvised. With, um, with, with Jessica Scarf. Yeah, which is quite <laughs> Yeah. Um... I don't know how Matt's able to be that flexible in a suit and like a jacket and a duffel coat and he's, all this. He's he's not gonna wear them again. <laughs> like they're gonna get ripped to shit. <clears throat> Rosario Dawson. Let me get some Claire. So uh, does Luke. So does Luke. Uh, he's but finally how... getting that coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, he's, he's, he's the one parched motherfucker. <laughs> Finally. It will be interesting to see how they play the Claire Temple Jessica Jones dynamic oh, in yeah, terms of, of Luke Cage now because they 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 both had coffee breaks yes. with Mr. Cage and it looks like Claire's is a little more serious than just having the coffee. I think they're getting a panini. No, <laughs> I think they're having a muffin. No, it has to be Jessica. But I think that you know we'll see. They play with it. I, I you know I prefer I I don't want him and Jessica to get together straight away. I, because I, they're I don't really want, boring. The I, ratings would drop. I don't want. They've got. They, they've got this. They've got this. The unspoken thing going I, on. I don't want. <laughs> More on that I later. Don't, I don't. Uh, <laughs> I don't want Luke and Jessica to get together just because they're together in the comics. Yeah, I would rather see it be a thing. If they're going to do that, I'd rather see it be organic. These are their own version of the characters, and they have to develop in their own in their own way. Yeah, but similarly, I don't want Claire Temple to just be the one who's dated everybody. That would suck. There's no. She, she doesn't. She doesn't date slash bang Iron Fist. I hope not. Or or Jessica Jones for that matter. I'm, I'm not against that. But that's because I'm a dirty bastard. <laughs> You're a dirty. I'm a dirty, dirty, dirty man. Bastard. I'm a dirty um, man. Um, but yeah. What else? That's um, it. <laughs> yeah, the the Electra. 
Of so course! That was the biggest reveal. Confirmed that she's at least the muscle for the villain. Which I said was going to happen. Yeah, well, we, we, no one I, listens to me! I we, hope, we certainly hope, but that creepy-ass shot of them fighting off um, like the guys in the suits... And she's just at the end of the corridor, just walking calmly towards it all. She has black eyes as well, doesn't she? Uh, and freaking size in hand, mm. more Electra comic book esque red costume, like looking pretty creepy. Who else do we get a glimpse of in the trailer? We didn't see a lot of people. I don't think I don't we know. saw any of the supporting cast aside from the main and the villain. No Foggy, no um, Karen. No Karen, no um, Malcolm. Is it Malcolm from. Jessica no, Jones. We got some Misty. We though. know he's in it though. We got, he's in it. Misty, Misty Knight is at the top. Pissed at Jessica yes. for interfering in an investigation. Colleen Wing was in the trailer. Actually, I tell a lie. Oh, okay, there's a bit of her in uh, in the dojo. I didn't catch her. Uh, so it's only a brief, it's like a brief shot of her. Yeah. Like I think she's being attacked and she's kicking people's she's ass. She's the best thing about Iron Fist. She's pretty great in Iron Fist. Can they? Do you think they can retcon it if they do a follow up to Iron Fist where like, oh, Danny died, uh, but Colleen's now the Iron Colleen Fist. Is, Colleen is the Iron Fist. This is a thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that'd please, be cool. please, do that. no, don't do that. That'd, we can, we can, Iron Fist can be salvaged. <laughs> like the main problem with that series was just it was fucking dull. Like it was written Shorten really it, boring. Shorten like. all the shows, from even without, forward. even without, like, because I didn't even finish the series because mm. I checked out by then. It was too fucking dull. Just but, short. If they just shorten them all, they have to concentrate all the best stuff into a shorter storytelling period plus you'll save money that you can spend on other shows there wasn't enough best stuff in Iron Fist is my my problem there wasn't enough best stuff in Iron Fist to fill out eight episodes was there a hallway fight yes because it looks like there is at least one big hallway fight fight. well there you go but it looks like there's a big one in Defenders according to the trailer and again if that could be the last one that would be great because then that could be the phase one trait like phase phase one one of the Netflix Every series had a hallway fight. There it is. Can we also have... Will we be getting Punisher in this? Because Punisher, I think, is out before... No, it's not. It's no. not out before Defenders. No, they, they've, not, they've not confirmed it's whether wrapped. he's in it. But they made a point of not denying him not being in, in it. That makes any sense. Like, basically, Punisher is likely to be in the Defenders somewhere. But we're not sure what role. He's not going to be a defender, though. No, unless he's like a he's backup or something. Like he comes in during some big to help out. Um, sort of like the end of is he series two? Finally, going to use that minigun. Oh, I wish it's that minigun tease. Sweet, oh, sweet minigun tease. Um, I, yeah, I think what you do after defenders reduce all the shows. This might be blasphemous, but hear me out. To six episodes, six to eight. Yeah, that way we could probably get three a year. Of different characters, which means we could get to uh, follow-up seasons quicker as well. Mm-hmm. So, like, imagine that if, like, next year we got the Punisher series, Daredevil series three, and Jessica Jones series two. Yeah, shorter, shorter arcs. Each, each six to eight episodes, hung down, perfect. You could even do it as like, for, like for example, Jessica Jones series two. It might be nice for it to be cases. So do like yeah. four two parters. Each based around a case. Or like, and all, and it, hour long episodes instead of 45 minutes. Yeah, that'd be amazing. That'd be sweet. Yeah. I would, I would jerk to that. I would just pound it. Just pound, just pound it. it. Well, speaking of shorter seasons. And pounding. I started American Gods today. And pounding. You pounded it. There's also some pounding in American Gods, yes. Of various types. <laughs> Tell me of American Gods! You should watch American Gods. <clears throat> and I speak to both you, Christopher, sitting across from me with your eyes. And you, the audience, listening to us with your ears. But you should watch American Gods with your eyes. You can also watch it with your ears. Some of you may only have the option of being able to watch it with your ears. Just watch it. <laughs> this has been a public service announcement <laughs> from Big Damn Matt. American Gods is based on a novel by <laughs> Neil Gaiman. It's about um, a man named Shadow Moon who's released from prison uh, a few days early because his wife has died. And on his way to the funeral, he meets the mysterious Mr. Wednesday and becomes, well, his, his man. I suppose. Yeah, he starts working for him. And it, then he gets sort of embroiled in a, in a, in some sort of what appears to be gods <laughs> or mystical beings in, in America and sort of struggling with, um, the modern gods of, of, of technology and, and media and such. Um, that might sound a bit spoilerish. It's not. That's like the literal scratching the surface of this story. Um, Old God versus new. Basically. Um, 
Baby cakes. But yeah, the first episode... Sugar plum. Of the... Of, stop it. Okay. I'm not your sugar plum. I'm, 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 your, sugar, I'm your sugar. Um. <laughs> so, uh, the first episode of the... I think it's 10 episode... That seems to be... Season. That seems to be the... What was Preacher? Preacher was 10. Preacher was 10. It was also bad. <laughs> well, it's got a season 2, so good on it. I hope, I hope season 2 And some heavily overpriced, thanks um, to... Um, Thanks to not be part of the EU properly anymore. Um, action figures. Oh God, of course. Oh, thanks for that. NECA figures um, are now twenty six ninety nine to thirty one ninety nine instead of sixteen ninety nine to twenty ninety nine. Thanks Brexit. Ever since we started to leave. Um. So the freaking dollar and pound everything dropped. And oh God. Anyway, I don't care what your political opinion is. We have to pay more for toys now. That's a bad thing. American gods. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a Star's original in the US it's being broadcast on Amazon Prime most everywhere else in the world so you can get it on Amazon Prime over here which is annoying because they haven't done that to Ash vs. Evil Dead yet they really should yeah it's I don't know I, don't know what I think Virgin picked that up Virgin first. picked it up for season 1 I don't know if they got it for season 2 because I've still not seen season 2 it's annoying but yeah it's a Star's and Amazon yeah. American Gods is working out though um, you've watched episode 1 yeah is it all available now or is it week by week it's week by week nice okay because it's it's broadcast on TV and on Stars in the States yeah of course so, so we're getting week by week essentially we're watching it on Stars plus 1 yeah but it's on Stars Prime. plus whatever the time difference is between the States and here <laughs> um, it dropped yesterday which would have been Tuesday no it dropped Monday yes the 1st of May over here so yeah it's um it's real good give it a watch uh, Brian Fuller is is one of the producers on it. He did Hannibal and and and, and such things. Um, he's he can be what's the word bloodthirsty at times. So when you go into this show, bear in mind that uh, violence and sex are going to come at you hard, hard, just pounding it, pounding it. Just like my heart was pounding when you and I watched Get Out on Monday night. Let's talk about Get Out. Finally. Okay. We so, finally saw Get Out. This is so late. It's. I think we're a month and a half behind everyone oh else. Oh, man. Uh, I think it came out in the UK tail end of February, start of March. So yeah. we're, we're pretty behind. I was shocked it was still playing, but I'm glad it was. Not only that, playing on a weeknight... With, two way yeah. four how was it we never what was it we saw it we saw it was Monday night to yeah. be fair but, but Bank Holiday Monday but even get even so not not the Sunday before Bank Holiday Monday for example yeah, Monday yeah. night it was packed it was a packed theatre screen on a Monday night for a two month old movie um let's not go into spoiler territory just in case there are people who haven't seen it yet I think it, I think let's leave it open still this movie when, when it, benefits when it, so much when it from comes you out going into video, it yeah we'll talk spoilers. We'll we'll do we'll do a pick up and we'll talk spoilers. In fact, when it comes when Get Out comes out on video, I think we'll do our our horror episode, but, but modern P- horror. PSA, yeah. Do not go looking for spoilers about this movie if you not haven't seen it. Just don't. Just go into it knowing as little as possible. Because I think everyone's assumption is it's going to be something to do. It's going to be some kind of thriller that has to do with race. That's all the trailers really give you, which it is. Which it is. But there's so much more to it, it than that, that. That's that's the that's one square in the patch blanket. It's oh my god, <laughs> I'm shook still from just, it. Just just thinking about like how just how good it is and how well put together and how solidly plotted and and smart it is and how tense it is and everyone's performances and yeah, yeah it's awesome. Um, this is this is Jordan Peele's directorial debut. His first feature film. So, his first yeah. feature film. Oh yeah, and, and he's he's a he's a comedian. He's, he's a sketch actor. Yeah, it's like, not that's his film. trade. It's, it's him. And <laughs> apparently, um, Kevin Michael Key was in there somewhere. He is. I'll tell you where on our face. I don't want to spoil it. Was he a voice by any chance? No, I'll tell you where. I, oh, okay. I don't. I can tell you where he is, but in doing so, I would be, it would be a major spoiler, so I can't tell you. Fair enough. That's fine. Is he the one that killed everybody in the last second? Yes. Oh no! Yeah. Oh no! Um, uh, yes, that's exactly where he is. No, everyone. Died. He just walks in, burns the screen, and then he came into our theater and stabbed everyone, <laughs> like, and everyone died. He's like, "You can't escape without the key!" And then just slaughtered everyone. <laughs> <laughs> As the screen just flashed at the words, "Get out! Get out! Get out!" Get out. It was very avant-garde. Oh. Yeah. Um, in fact, was... we're not even here now, telling the tale. No, we're still there in the cinema. Um, no, go go and go and see Get Out um, if you can, if, if you mm. haven't, and, and if, you should have because we were spectacularly late to the party with it. So 
you should you should be telling us off. For, it's one of those films that is obviously enough. still making money because word of mouth is keeping it in cinemas. I haven't heard anyone say a bad word about this movie. No, Daniel Kaluuya is so good. He's very good. He's ridiculously he's good. Very very good. And it's surprising so many people in a weird way, but I think that's just because he's mostly known for smaller British TV stuff. Like I, I was, I was thinking the other day, I was like, what have I seen him in? Black Mirror. Like he's in thingy credits in a series one. Yeah. Um, Psychoville is what I remember him from the most as Tea Leaf. Um, but like, I, it struck me after we watched the film, I was like, oh, he's in Planet of the Dead, Doctor Who. Yeah. I was like, oh god, he's in that. Of course he is. He's in all sorts of Cause shit. Because that, that was back when he was um, sort of a bit tubbier. Yeah. Because everyone's always still surprised. I was like, oh shit, it's the same guy from the. Cause it was, he's in like I can't remember which one, but he was in a Channel Four show as well, I think. And he was, yeah, I think he was so. bigger at the time, like yeah. physically bigger. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. It always shocks people. Dude's got buff. Um, yeah. He could be a beast. Um, <laughs> <laughs> references. Um, uh, but yeah, just some uh, phenomenal casting. But him in particular, just to handle this kind of story, you because you're basically with him all the way and he's yeah. just it, oh good lord it's it it came out of nowhere because we really didn't know where the story was going to go we got the basic idea you get the trailer version of it you're like okay like meeting parents couple something's creepy couple, something couple of em- going on couple of employees who work at the house are the only black people in the area and they're behaving a bit strange around everyone what is this and yeah. that's that was the trailer that was all it said it was like right okay well, there's gonna be a... <laughs> yeah and it's even more disturbing now thinking about the promo image the promo image is like yeah. relying on him sat there like tears streaming down his eyes you're like what is that about even made even more disturbing knowing what's happening now yeah it's horrible. It's, I love it's it. It's awesome. And it, it's, like I say, when it comes out on home video, we'll, we'll talk a bit more about it in depth. Because I'd, li- I'd like to get my teeth into the, into the spoileriness of it. But also, like, oh. we, we were talking about how it, se- it seems to be in this group of modern horror flicks in the last, sort of, five, ten years. Yeah. That work. I'd say five years, because ten years you get a bit old to be, to be calling it modern with a straight yeah, face. Yeah, like, well, but, but, but in that last <laughs> with a straight face, you just want But it, it, it's in that, um, we'll say, 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 we'll say we'll say decade because we were talking about like the first yeah. paranormal activity did this thing where first paranormal activity it snuck up on you yeah, like... before it became a gimmick and that was think yeah. I think the first one was two thousand two thousand no first two thousand and nine uh, no that was home distribution I think two thousand six was when it first no started it, playing. I did, it wasn't on Cause it was a festival it was a festival um, film for oh okay years. It, yeah it didn't get a wide release until two thousand and nine over here because I went to see it when I was only in London yeah yeah because they they knew it was um they knew they were sequelizing it by that point they knew they were going to do a follow up so they did yeah. like a big release. About a year before the second one. Okay. Um, but I would argue like that, that. Its, its influence wouldn't really start until it got that wide release. Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. So. Um, because we were talking about films like It Follows and, mm. and um, sort of Babadook, t- t- Babadook and th- th- to a lesser degree, things like As Above, So Below that sort of play with yeah. beaten to death tropes, but kind of tried to do something different with the tension. Yeah. But in terms of in terms of the, the, the in terms of the effect, I think the trifecta is Get Out, It Follows, and The Babadook for doing something very different. Uh, Whilst at the same time being very traditional, but look. they're all surprising for different reasons. But we'll get into them one day. We'll do a... No. Uh, uh, we'll do a big... Uh, we'll do, oh, God. We'll do a big <laughs> podcast that one day. Yeah. But right now, let's get to the meat and potatoes. The meat you. and potatoes of this week. The meat and potatoes. Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 2. We're going to talk non-spoilers for a bit, and then we'll give you a big old warning when we get to spoilers, ladies and gents. Um, First off, yes, first off, yes. What did you think of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two? I'm saving a break for the uh, for the ads. To play. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Matt, what I thought of Guardians of the Galaxy <laughs> Volume 2, I really enjoyed it. I, I sort of went in with a a lowered expectation simply because I was like, there's going to be, there's going to be a sense of diminishing returns here. It's in not some got way. that surprise factor yeah, in the first film. It will never, it will yeah. never slap you in the face like a cold fish like the first one did. Like, this will always be expected in some ways. Um, but I also have a lot of faith in James Gunn, like, to still surprise me. I believe in Gunn. Double N at the end. So just to clarify, um, I believe every American has the right to bear James Gunn. Um, so yeah, because I because I, I really like the first Guardians. I really love um, Super, and I really love Sin- uh, Slither. I've oh, still like, not seen Slither. Slither is so great. Super is fun. If you look, if you love yourself some Michael Rooker, 
you've got to watch Slither. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you love yourself some Elizabeth Banks and Nathan Fillion, you've got to watch Slither. If you love like yourself some 80s things. creature horror, you've got to love Slither. I do like all those things. It's so good. Um, and that's that's what's what was wonderful about this is I went in with slightly lower expectation, yeah. so I didn't work myself up too much. But then I came out with a much higher opinion of the movie than I thought I was going to have. Well, that's, that's always nice. I think uh, if you want the basic, if you want the basic on the surface review, and take from this what you will, because some people will misinterpret this, they always do. I give it a really solid three stars. I go with four. That's fine. I, but again, I completely yeah. understand why you would. But then I, I, I give I, it a three, but that's because I gave Guardians a four. Yeah, in my the, head, the first so. one's a five for me. Oh, yeah, so um, yeah, yeah. So it's. People are like, three star, only three. I'm like, only th- three, three stars? Three, six out of ten, it's above average, Mother Truckers. Yeah, like, what are you is, talking about? This is, this is a, I, think, I think this Two. is an excellent sequel to a, to a phenomenal film. movie. Yeah, this, um, this is this is the... Um, I'm trying to think how to compare it. What was it I said a while ago? It was a film I was talking about on my channel in film reviews, and I can't remember what it was, where I said like it was a follow-up to something, and that it was great because basically it was just a wonderful extra bit of that thing you really liked last yeah. time. I can't remember what it was now, but that's what basically what this this is the this this is the um, if if Guardians of the Galaxy was your medium Big Mac meal, yeah, this is you going large, like you're just getting that extra bit of the same thing you like, just a bit more of everything else. I would argue there's more to it than that. Fair yeah, enough. Don't get yeah. sling some bacon on there. <laughs> Slap some um, bacon on it. Maybe get some, some. Maybe get some mozzarella dippers on the side. Oh, babes. Yeah, that's why I'm hungry, hungry now. See it. <laughs> <laughs> God, you're making me hungry. Now. Um, um, I but, uh, believe. In a thing called love. Just listen to the rhythm of my heart. There's a chance we can make it now. We can make it till the sun goes down. I believe that this is probably the best looking movie we're going to get this year. Oh, in terms of visuals? In terms of visuals. Nice. Because it looks <clears throat> beautiful. It is And lush. it's so colourful and vibrant and... Um, I think I think uh, it, was, it was Mark Hermode's review said it that... that Mm, Certainly, yeah. that opening sequence is like it looks like an animated Yes album cover. Yes, it does. <laughs> it just... Oh my god, that's perfect. Which, which is which is excellent when it's invoking the L.O. Yeah, which I mean, is, that's freaking... which is kind of you know it's an adjacent sort of. That is the best stuff. description. <laughs> I just, I'm just like as you said, I watched his review. Well, he yeah. listened because he did it yeah. over Skype and yeah. they didn't do the usual video, but but I, I listened to it and um. I didn't pick up on that, but as you said it then, I pictured the the best of Yes cover. Yeah. I was like, "Oh shit!" It does it really does? Like, oh the my whole God. movie's got this sort of this <laughs> sense of like that that seventies prog rock, yeah, like that yes and Boston. And, I think and all that's that. it. If the first one was an eighties mixtape with seventies influences, this yeah. one's seventies. Like, this this goes like, back a bit more into that realm. This is like weird seventies sci-fi novel covers. Yeah, it, uh, it, it, it's it's very much. Um, it's it's strange birds this, wheeling this in alien balance. skies with flowers that look like the, the first yeah. the first one's funkier this one's the balance this yeah which is made even more important by the fact that like a you know, pop pop ballad to be fair but a pop ballad is a crucial character point and, yeah. and thing in the movie the, the way they use the music is is really smart that again. Was the thing. in the yeah. first one the music was just this beautiful sort of um Wrap around for everything. Like the music was clearly influencing what they were doing. It was the mood but, setter. But it was a well, mood yeah. setter. In this one, some of the music directly informs plot. It was like, wait, yeah. what? Like how the yeah. characters made decisions in their life and where they came from. And, and it's like, okay. I mean, the music is so influential in Guardians that even in the world of the movie, it turns out the Ravagers made a copy of Quill's old tape. Yeah. Which also means the music we're hearing for a lot of this film is stuff on in the world of the movie from Awesome Mix Volume 1. How big was that tape? No, this is all Awesome Mix Volume 2. On, on the Ravager ship, it's st- it'll be from his old tape. you got copies of Quill's old stuff, right? Oh, yeah, of course, because yeah. they want to... Uh, yeah, like so it. like that... Because like again, technically, like Awesome Mix Volume 1 had like Jackson 5 on it yeah. in terms of the releases, yeah. but that was actually on Awesome Mix Volume 2 in the movie. What I'm basically saying is, uh, as a <laughs> OCD, <laughs> like, tortured... Geek, I would like a copy of those tapes with the correct music on, please. Help me. I have my priorities all wrong. But, but. also, music, really heavily informed. Visuals, gorgeous. Now, at first I thought it was a bit of a downside that we didn't see as much of the galaxy this time as we did last time. Last film, there's like five or six different settings. This one, there's sort of three primary ones. But, I think they did something... I yeah. think that's because it was about character. Like you said, the yeah. visuals were lush, 
but the visuals weren't the story. The they story this time wasn't even a story, really. It was a character piece. They did something really with smart some set pieces. when you've got already got an already big cast. Instead yeah. of doing what some of the other Marvel movies have done recently and just go for a bigger cast and a bigger cast and yeah. a bigger cast, yeah. they brought it back down. It was like, yeah, we could make this bigger. We, we could, have we could bring characters. in the we could bring in the Nova Corps. We could bring in yeah. the Kree again. We could do all this that and the other. We could involve Thanos and stuff. No, we've got new characters, mm. but I think we, we have. Only, we've only got as many new characters as we had in the last one. And like one of the new characters, like straight up, just feels like an extension of something we already know. Yeah, Taserface exactly. face yeah. is an extension of the Ravagers. Taser like we, God, that's amazing. <laughs> But like, but like Taserface was an extension of the Ravager, so he felt familiar still. Like yeah. we've, we've, if he, I would watch the first one again just to see if that prosthetic and that actor is in he there. He might well be. He could be. He couldn't be. Either way, I feel like he's been there the whole time. Yeah. So that worked quite nicely. Um, Kurt Russell as Ego, and I keep forgetting the actress's name, but, but um, uh, uh, Mantis. Uh, uh, Pom Clement. Pom Clementif. What a great name. He's a fucking fabulous. Sounds name. like a Guardian's character. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> what are you called? Mantis. Oh, oh, that's a shame. <laughs> yeah, that's a <laughs> Should we call Pom Clementif? Yeah. Um, they, again, like, they feel familiar in a way. Like, Ego certainly has a lot of the Peter Quill about him. Yeah. Um, because, of course, he would, as the trailer states. He's his dad, Peter. Yeah, I'm your dad, yeah. Peter. Um, and Mantis feels very much like an amalgamation of like Drax and Gamora's like lack of um, social graces, social graces. Yeah. Uh, so these new even like you're saying these new characters they haven't dumped a bunch of stuff on you because they all sort of feel like they've been here already in a good way like y- you this film isn't introducing you to the galaxy to the wider yeah. cosmic Marvel universe it's saying oh you're back Cool. I think, Let's tell another story. I, I feel so it like, feels it feels comfy. I feel like there's some criticism in this movie that there's not enough character stuff in it. I'd argue that the character stuff in it is just very economical. Yeah. Oh yeah. And it's, very, it's, it's and very cleverly and very smartly used. This movie's mostly about dissecting what makes people the way they are. This is this is as I'm sure it pretty much comes with the trailers. This is a movie about family. Yeah. And, but I, I'd say the characters it probably focuses on the most in terms of dissecting them is. Um, Rocket. Oh know. yeah, there's just some really nice things. Really nice for Rocket because Rocket is not the same Rocket we met last time. No, he's been through some shit, man. He's been through some shit, but also like that's the thing. He, his dynamics gone. He was a bounty hunter, and his yeah. best mate was his muscle. His best mate died, and this is something James Gunn's made a big point of. Yeah, Baby Groot isn't Groot. He's, he's Baby a, Groot he's is a new, new character. Yeah. So yes, he. <clears throat> Is sort of like it's like a, it's like a clone almost. It's yeah. like he's gonna be the same, but this is a baby that at least likes the crew because I guess they're his they're, they're his family, they're his parents. Yeah. Like he's very cuddly with everybody, which is quite sweet. Yeah. Um, and you're just looking at it, and you can just hear the you can hear the cash registers like every oh, time man. he says anything on moves. Oh man! Um, but not in a bad way. It works really nicely. Um, but like his so his best mate's gone. And he's with this group of people who he doesn't really know very well. No. Because he was the last he was the last one to sort of go, all right, fine, in the last movie. Like, yeah. he was the reluctant party. So you get to see what Rocket's deal is, really. And, and they've been to... together as a, as a group for a few months, I think. Yeah, they, well, they, it's definitely the same year as the first one, because it's uh, 2014. Yeah. So they've been, they've been together long enough to be working well as a team on jobs but there's still that tension well, and you Rocket, say working, working well as a team on well, jobs well, 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 like, to the point where people are still are hiring them they're yeah. going you lot get shit done no Come one's here. dead they're still all they're all still alive yeah I think the best way to describe it, they're basically the crew of Serenity yeah that's what they are yeah there's a bit of they're a family lines, and there's tension like in different patterns yeah um, some physical some sort of sexual like, all it's stuff. just some unspoken thing it is. Um, so, like, we go we go into Rocket a bit. We go a lot into Yondu, which I really liked. Yeah, I, I liked that. I, I liked didn't the... expect that at all. And as after we came out of the movie, Lucy pointed out the Animax poster, Yondu's, like, the biggest head on it. Mm. And she went, I didn't realise that until we came out. Like, how prominent he is really in the smart, marketing. Yeah. And, and it, it's like, oh, God, you're right. It's, yeah. Um... I think I think um, I saw it on Saturday with with um, Billy and, and Dan as well um, from from Five uh, WF and they they were like oh God like I didn't expect him to be as big a part of it yeah it's like you don't do you but he is and Michael Rooker is excellent um, which is hilarious because you see him in interviews and he does seem like a bit of just a loud mouth like yeah 
like sort of troublemaker. It's definitely the persona he's 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 uh, he's put out there for himself. Whereas when you see him as Yon doing this, you're like, oh shit, the nuance and everything. He does it really well. Yeah, yeah he does. Like so he sort of he sort of he sort of made you think he couldn't quite be that layered, but then he shows off. Oh no, I know what I'm doing, and he's yeah. great. Um, Star Lord obviously gets, I think, the biggest amount of character stuff in terms of delving into what makes him tick. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, mixed in with his dad and finding out where the hell this went, which we'll get to in spoilers. Um, and Nebula. Nebula gets some interesting. Nebula isn't yeah. just a boo his villain in this. She's a boo his villain that makes you go. Actually, can we give her a hug? I don't think she's not even really a boo his villain. Like, oh, they, they brand her as such. Like, you think a super villain would be able to, uh, like? Oh yeah, convincingly I, lie and things I, like yeah, this. They, 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 they talk about it like that, but I don't think I don't think we're, we as the audience at any point are supposed to feel about. All no, that. I mean I think I think she's still she's a threat certainly. Mm. Oh, I think I think I, w- I wonder if it's. Oh, that sounds weird. I wonder if I wonder if our Doctor Who like um, side makes us like her a bit more instantly already. I know I, there's no Amy Pond in Nebula. Oh no, no, but like, I, I wonder. But there is that thing of like, oh my god, it's Karen Gillan in a film. It is Karen Gillan in a film, yeah. And it, and it makes me it makes me wonder what someone who's not a Doctor Who fan, for example, would feel about Nebula going in this one. Like whether or not they'd be like, oh, that's that scary ass woman from the first one. Yeah. And then start to like. Whereas from the top, I already kind of like her anyway because I'm like, yeah, it's Karen Gillan in a movie. <laughs> Um, Zoe Saldana is amazing. Yes. Um, also, like, she and Dave Batista are sort of advocates for people being painted green, looking kind of hot. <laughs> they are both, they are both gorgeous. Can we paint more they people are both, green, They're please? both gorgeous anyway, in real life. They're beautiful people. Green inside is and my favourite colour. I don't know them personally, but I imagine they are inside and out. Disclaimer. Everyone's a beautiful person, unless they're not. But. You're repulsive. I am repulsive in many ways, but. I wouldn't be if I was painted green. That's the point I'm making. Like, they, they just, they're gorgeous, man. Like, they make, in that way where you're not detached from the appearance. Like, these characters are so fleshed out, and we like them so much from the last time, that you feel completely comfortable with them. Yeah. Like, they're not actors in makeup. These are the characters. These are completely the characters. You know them, you love them for who they are. Um, Mantis, I thought was going to annoy me. Yeah. She really did not. Yeah. I think they, they, they do quite nice. And that's down to our old mate, Clem Finkelstang, or whatever she's called. What's she called? What's she called again? Palmy Mama. Palmy Mama. Pom Clementy. Yeah, Pom Pom McClementine. Um, she's great. Yeah, she she's is. She's brilliant. She, 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 I could see, I could see some people maybe getting annoyed by the character. Yeah, maybe. But her, Doing the whole innocent thing. Maybe. But the truth, that she sort of puts into it the wankiest way to say it like the truth the truth she's putting out there like there's a there's a moment she like her character's an empath and she can she can feel other people's feelings in 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 a way where they can truly understand yeah um like touching someone she can she can sense their feelings you saw in the trailer the whole you sense love sexual love for her um, that's great great and, and, and still made me piss myself in the, in the cinema oh I, I spent even though I'd seen it like eight times already I in the spent trailers. this entire movie grinning oh, and man. when I wasn't grinning I was laughing oh cr- Batista could like so there's a story like with the cast in the first movie he really wanted it yeah he really wanted it and he auditioned and he was like thinking and then he got the call and he apparently like burst into tears and it was like the happiest thing ever and then the first thing he immediately did was book a shit ton of like um, condensed acting classes. Yeah, because he's obviously a performer. Like, oh yeah, yeah. professional Rest- wrestlers are performers. There's, there's, there's a big element of, of of the stage and acting to wrestling. Just don't say that to them. Um, have the joy of it. Don't say that to them. Apart from apparently Dwayne Johnson and Dave oh, Batista, no, no. you can just... openly talk to them about acting. They don't care. Others yeah. still get a bit stitchy well, they, they've about got it. To maintain the kayfabe. It's weird. The kayfabe. But <laughs> oh my god. But. Like so, he he just wanted to freshen up. He wanted to make sure that he was like he wasn't the odd one out yeah, when he yeah. got there, and he wasn't just hired for sort of the muscle. And he proved himself so well in Guardians. Like he's, yeah. I think, if he picked the, the 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 three humanoid leads in that movie, he's not the top of your list. No, Christ alive, if he isn't contender for the best thing about this movie. Oh, he's amazing in this because yeah. they give him so much humorous material, and he dishes it out so well. And again, a lot of people get annoyed that he's different from the comic book portrayal. Like, the, it's an, uh, his personality in the movies is an element of the comic book Drax. Oh, God. Specifically, well, specifically the late... infinitely more interesting in well, this that's the thing. The comic yeah. Drax has ever fucking that been. That is the thing. I mean, I... the Drax in the comics, in the Michael, Brian, Michael, Brian Michael Bendis run of Guardians, they've tried, they've slowly been changing him to be more like the movie yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
and it's taken a while. Like Brian Michael Bendis didn't just do it overnight, which I think was a wise decision. Um, but like because it's the movie one, there's just something much more interesting and unique about this portrayal of the character. Yeah, I think so. And oh God, like you, you were talking about before we started recording, you went like obviously in the last one he was learning more from his new family. Yeah, the thing he seems to have latched on most is a sense of humour. Yeah, he's he's definitely learnt that from them, and and I think you can see how each. Each character has been influenced by the others in, in, in ways. Well, yeah, aside from... Ro- Rocket seems to be the only one who hasn't changed, and he's refusing to change, but that's a part of his character yeah. arc in this movie. Yeah. Um, villains. I think this is the first Marvel movie where the villains uh, that aren't Loki will be memorable to the general public. Because they're really well done. Because they're really well done. You've got minor antagonists in the form of the Sovereign. Yeah. The gold-covered people in the trailers. They're they're a fun idea. They're a proper sort of, like, um, C-plot, daft um, peril. Yeah. And they're great. And they work really well for what they are. They're really yeah, fun. They're really, really fun. Um, and yeah. there's that. Um, but then you, uh, Nebula, I suppose, is your, B, is your B-plot yeah. antagonist. Because she's obviously out for Gamora's blood. And gets gets the guardians into trouble on a couple of occasions during the movie, um, but then there's something else. There is something. Else. There is something else that, especially in the visuals, will stick with people. Just, yeah. Um, and that's all we'll say in the non-spoiler section. Should we? Should we do what we've done a few times where we do the emails and then spoilers, or should we trust um, in the time codes? Trust in the time codes. Let's trust in the time trust codes. Trust in the time codes. Trust in the time codes. Yeah, mothers. Let's talk. This is. People do this on podcasts all the time. Yeah, gosh darn it. Ladies well, and gentlemen, be in the time codes. if you don't want spoilers for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, look in the description. If you're on YouTube, you can click ahead. If you're on iTunes, you can fast forward on your device. Or you can just pause here, go watch the movie, and then press play again That's a good and pick plan. up. That's um, a good one. It's unless, very of co- good. unless, of course, your email answer from us uh, determines life or death in a situation, in which case, sorry! <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> Spoilers, spoilers, dear God, spoilers. Yes. Everyone dies. Everyone dies. Everyone dies. Um, Kevin Michael Keats came in and killed everyone. <laughs> so weird. Yes, he um, did. So, Ego, man. Ego. Ego, the living they motherfucking They fucking went planet. there. They actually went there. James Gunn said around the time of the first movie, like when it wrapped up and they announced the sequel, people went, so, like, you know, what's next? And he said, we're going to tell the story of where Peter's from. We're going to tell the story of his dad. Yeah. And everyone went, all oh, right, so was it Jason? Just on a Spartax. Just on a Spartax. And he went, no. No. Everyone went, but that's his dad. And he went, in the comics, maybe. Yeah, not We're yet. telling a different story. Yeah. So for years, people were coming up with theories, like, you know, like clickbait pieces and thought pe- think pieces online. Like, everyone going, like, it could be this, it could be that, it could be that. And then they announced that Kurt Russell was in the movie. And then they announced that Kurt Russell would be playing um, Peter's Star dad. Wars dad, Peter's yeah. dad. And then, through a mix of, I think, a press release and Funko Pop, because of course... No, I think... I think it was it announced his character was, was called Ego. It was confirmed before that. Okay. We knew he was Ego before we saw Oh, that was Funko it. That, that was it. The, the Funko Pop showed what he looked like. That was it. That yeah. Was, that we saw I, the, beard, the bearded dude with the jacket. And they were like, oh, was, that's what he looks I like. I think it was the Comic-Con panel where yeah. they came out and they introduced him as Ego. That's it. I think. Um, I think it was. It was definitely around last summer that it came out. Yeah. Um, and we were all like, wait a minute. Yeah. There's what? a character in Marvel called Ego. Ego. And that character's a giant fucking planetoid he's, with he's a face. He's called Ego the Living Planet. It's a self terraforming rock in space with a face. Yes. Like, that's not him, right? And then we saw the first, like, what he looked like. We saw, like, the beard. And immediately you think of the weird face that Ego the Living Planet has that sort of looks like it has a beard. And you're like, no, it's not the no. same ego. Come on, it's, it's not, not the same ego. It's not. It ca- it's ego the living fucking planet. It's ego the living planet. Who is in this? Who in this is a celestial. Yes, which is amazing. What a great idea. Yeah. Um, and isn't necessarily like the planet. He's not the planet. He's something living inside it. The planet's a protective shell. Yeah. But his power allows him to terraform and change. Uh, and he form... Manipulate matter on a molecular level. And form a human shape. Yeah. He's essentially a god. But as he says, uh, small g. Like, he's not uh, the the lord of all creation. He can't shape the universe. Yet. Yet. <laughs> and that was what was great, because they really, like, as the film was going on, I was like, I've got a suspicion he's going to be the threat. He's too nice. He's, he's too likable. This is too good. Plus, again, the limited set pieces, 
They were just yeah. hanging out on his planet. I was like, this isn't right. Like, Star-Lord, Drax, Gamora in this action family film, action sci-fi, yeah. have only been in one set piece early on. This isn't right. Something big has got to be brewing here. Because we were getting our action... Like, it's a character film, like we say. It's about family yeah. and, 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 and dissecting what makes everyone tick. But... It's also an action summer blockbuster. It needs to have its set pieces. Yeah. We get one big one at the beginning. We get a couple of, of smaller ones that escalate with Yondu and Rocket. <laughs> yeah, the Ravagers trying to capture Rocket and then uh, Yondu taking back after the, yeah. after the mutiny. Oh, the coup. God. The freaking, just the, just the camera pulling up. Yeah. To see, like, rockets firing, going out the different doors, and Yondu's arrow just wiping motherfuckers out. Um, which is great. And, like, just joyous. And again, a film where they're like, oh, oh, yeah, no, we kill people. Yeah, no. no. This is a like, film about scoundrels. This is yeah. a film about vagabonds and rogues. It's gonna happen. We're just not gonna, they're not gonna, like, glorify the killing, but they're gonna enjoy doing it. Like, oh, they're yeah. not nice people. Yeah. Um, no, they're not. It's great. Uh, so there's that. <laughs> Um, it's, I mean, come on, everyone always complains, like, oh no, the hero shouldn't do this, the hero shouldn't do that. I'm sorry, isn't Indiana Jones one of your favourite characters? Just sit the fuck down. Like, Indiana Jones. <laughs> Indiana Jones is murdering more like left and right. murder, especially if you've got a sword. You like Nathan Drake? Yeah. What do you do in those oh, games? How many people does Nathan Drake kill in Uncharted? There you all go. All of them. Literally all of them. Yeah. I was loving Vagabonds and Rogues. So that was, that, that's the thing, you're like, the ego seems a bit like a bit of a vagabond, seems like a bit of a tough cookie, what's yeah. going on here? Yeah, the dude The dude wants to become a god with a big G. He spent millennia travelling to different planets, romancing a species, having a child with someone, and whilst there, putting a part of himself on every world. Seeding world's. himself. Seeding himself. These little sort of terraforming like, plants. Yeah. Um, so he's been doing that. And then as he... I suppose... Like, I, th- I guess... I suppose his, his quest originally was just to seed everywhere and spread. Yeah. But he probably and that's the thing. You sense that he has fallen in love. Like oh, he yeah. hasn't necessarily just oh, yeah. done this for the plan. Like he has he hasn't like just picked anyone. He's fallen he's gone to each world and found someone he likes and spent time with them. Because as he says, he he, he knew that if he went back uh, uh one more time for, for, God, for Meredith for, for, for Star yeah. Mother, then he wouldn't come back. So he had to kill her. That Oh my god. That was the bit, that was the yeah. one part of the movie that grabbed me by the stomach and like squeezed it. Where he just said, I had to put that, it killed me, but I had to put that tumour in her head. Yeah. And Star Lord just immediately snaps out of his, um, like, because he's sort of been given a shared vision, isn't yeah, he? Yeah. He sort of snaps out of it and just shoots the fuck out of ego. Yeah. And, and I love, that, I love no, that. No questions. Just do, 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 there's no blasted him. There's no moment after that where I mean ego tries, but there's no moment after that where Peter looks like he's going to come around to his side again. Yeah. You can't you can't be talked down so from that. You killed my mother. Yeah. So he's been out there siring because at some point during his journey he's realised I don't have enough power for this. I need another celestial. So and I'm going to have to come by. I'm going to birth one. So he has babies. And over the years, he's had different people bring the children to him. And it most out, recently, Yondu. Most recently, Yondu, because I think Yondu's done a few, and he's done like four or five, yeah. something like that. And then when Yondu figured out what was happening, he kept Peter, which was brilliant, and kept up the whole thing of like, no, it's, uh, we kept him because he was small, good for thieving, getting places bigger people can't. Yeah. It's like, no, you kept him. Because you kept him alive by because keeping him away from ego. Also, as you find as you find out, Yondu is exiled from yes. the Ravagers. The, his Ravager clan are sort yeah. of like some weird little offshoot where they're all loyal to him. They're exiles. Yeah, they're yeah. all loyal to him, but like they ain't going to get any benefit from it. Because it's part of the Ravager code that they don't deal in children. Yeah. <clears throat> as, as you find out from Sylvester Stallone. Who is playing... What's his character called again? Um... Stalak well, what... in this, but it's, it's yeah. a shortened version of his name from... Yeah. Uh, of, a, of a Marvel character's name, basically. When I saw when the... I saw his jacket, I was like, "I've seen that design before." Yeah. The, the weird little pointed things. I was like, "I've seen that before," and I convinced myself. I was like, "No, I'm just I'm imagining things. I'm thinking of like Black Bolt or someone. That's what I'm thinking of. I'm just yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm I'm thinking of like him with the thing on his head." And it's no, it's because I was picturing the freaking character he was based on, which has that on his freaking oh, mask. I'll find the name for it. But basically, oh, him, him and him and some of the other Ravager captains are the MCU versions of the original guys of the galaxy. Yeah, who in the comics were far future versions. Yeah. Like, they were off. way off. Yeah. And, and this, you get an implication that these guys started the Ravagers, 
Like they were a gang. They were yeah. they were basically the Guardians of the Galaxy yeah. in in you know in concept, like a, a band of sort of anti-hero villain vigilante thieves murderers who do jobs and profit for themselves and then eventually became the ravages um and it's such a great idea because it's like oh my god so yondu sacrificed everything that made him and his clan important so this is the only stakar that's the one um oh my god it's just oh because you find out what happened to the kids he'd bring all he'd get the kids brought to his world he'd hang out with them for a bit Test their power, and if they didn't have similar powers as he does, now that he's mm-hmm. in, now that they're in proximity of him, because that was the thing, wasn't it? The child had to be on his world, like near. Yeah, because they're himself. not full celestial. No, they're like they're you know they're, they're a hybrid, um, oh, which is hilarious. Someone said like a hybrid in the film, and immediately Billy and Dant around uh, to make a point. It was fucking hilarious. Hybrid. Oh god. Um... <laughs> Um, love it, love it. But, but like they, they, did, they did that so like he did it he gets them there he tries their powers and if the powers don't work he basically drains them of what energy social energy they do have which is implied to be a very minimal amount mm-hmm. and then he dumps the body in the planet core somewhere in one of the caverns because Gamora and Nebula find a cavern full of thousands of skeletons yeah and rotting corpses it's like this is wonderfully horrific um, my favourite horrific part, though, in all of it, bizarrely, well, there's two. One's a visual effect and one's an implication. Um, one of them was Nebula's story, where she told you, like, why she hates Gamora. Yeah. And it's because their father would make them fight, and every time Gamora won, Thanos would tear part of Nebula off or out. And replace and it, replace with, it machinery. with machinery so she could be nearly as good as her sister. And it's like, oh my god. Well, so Gamora was be... fighting for survival, yeah. as was Nebula. Gamora just happened to win every time. Yeah. So Nebula was punished by being physically, like, violently. Um, uh, oh, what's the word? Um, oh, like, uh, amputated, basically, by her dad. So her cybernetic arm and all her implants and her eye and apparently a freaking her brain and stuff are like have all been replaced because Thanos was like, "You are my least favorite daughter." Uh, <laughs> there you go. Maybe you'll be as good as your sister now. It's like, oh my god, no wonder Nebula hates Gamora. But at the same time, like, what's it, what choice did they have? Like, well, that was the point, wasn't it? You could have done. You could have said no. It's like you know full well I couldn't. But Gamora clearly houses regret for it as yeah. well. Yeah. Their story was really nicely done in this movie, and I like how it isn't resolved by the end, but they're on the way to being mended. Yeah. Like, Nebula still yeah. buggers off. She, I think she, so. she doesn't forgive her, but she sees, yeah, you had no choice. I think we'll be seeing her again. Yeah, oh god, yeah, absolutely. Um, what else? Baby Groot! Baby, baby Groot! Groot! My baby, baby Groot. Groot! Different character, totally shows... This adorable, helpless, little stupid thing that could also be really violent. Yeah. The entire section where they were sending him after the Finn in the captain's quarters. He just kept coming back with different things. Eventually leading to a severed toe. Yeah. And they're like, please tell me, was it Rocket City on Please tell me you've got like a freezer somewhere with a lot of severed toes. And <laughs> just like, looks like, no. 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 So we'll no. never speak of this again. No. <laughs> so creepy. Oh god, what else? James James Gunn, not James Gunn. Sean Gunn's character, I can't remember his name, but Yondu's like um what do you call it? Right hand man. Craglin. Craglin. He's so good. Yeah. He's oh, great. And, and what's happened here is obviously the amount of work he puts into these movies, they were like, Yeah, we're gonna give you a bigger role. Because Sean Gunn of course plays Rocket as well on set. Mm-hmm. Like he he's the physical stand in for Rocket. And came up with a bunch of lines as well in the first one, like the whole here we are, standing up like a bunch of assholes, whatever it is. Yeah, like a bunch of uh, douchebags or whatever. That was him impro- improvised by him on set. And <laughs> if you watch the first Guardians, after he says that, as he finishes the line, because obviously then Bradley Cooper dubbed the line, <laughs> as he says it, you can see Chris Pratt and Dave Bautista starting to crack up, but it's a wide <laughs> shot, so yeah. unless you're looking really close, you can't see it. And they left that just that split second in. There's a little nod to the fact that that was just one of the weirdest improv moments on set. Yeah. Um, but he's great as as Cra- Craglin. Cra- uh, Craglin, yeah. Craglin. He's Craglin. brilliant in it. And there's just that weird, that weird kind of 
Sean Raw he's got going on. Just like kept things cartoony. Yeah. But still played really well with the drama of it all. It was so good. Especially at the end when like they give uh, the big funeral and they finally like they, they flash the colours, they flash the lights, the fireworks and everything. And you can just see how happy he is for his fallen captain that like he's even in death he's honoured again, like he's accepted. Mm. Yondu's death Yeah. Yeah. And what his the funeral. Hell? And his funeral being the the final set piece of the movie. And it ends on quite a, a, a down but optimistic note. Yeah. It's it's, it's, bit really, it's very grown up for a um a big silly movie about daft songs and a tree. It is a big silly movie about daft songs and a tree also. It really is. It really is. <laughs> I like how Gamora and Starla don't become a thing by the end. It's an unspoken thing. Like because it sticks with yeah. the philosophy of the movie. Like it presents the whole like it's like an eighty six it's a TV sitcom. Yeah. Like are they going to get together? Will they? Won't they? They never get together because then it's boring. The ratings drop. So they're doing that in the movie. And also, like, it's an unspoken thing, baby. It's an unspoken thing. It's an unspoken thing. It's an unspoken thing, baby. Uh, it's just, a thing. There's just so much to love. It's just a swamp thing, baby. You there's wouldn't just understand. So much to love about this movie. It's its sense of fun and the way it revels mm. in the universe it's created and throws all these things at you and like Pac Man. Oh god! Well, the <laughs> the entire final set piece is wonderful because it's basically a toy box at yeah. first, just for the villain. Like he can do anything; he can do anything to stop them when he's there and present. I'm not sure exactly what shot it is, but there's a shot in that sequence which is the the largest visual effect shot ever put on film. Really? He uses over a trillion polygons. I wonder if it's the giant, um, the giant ego and Pac Man about to punch each other inside inside the planet core. That's Maybe it's that. Awesome. But it's like it's they set it in all up sequence. though. Like I can I can create things. Oh my god! Like there is going to be a giant statue. Get ready for a giant statue of Pac Man. Yeah. With Skeletor and I can't remember what he says he says an actress. And then he says like, he's like oh, you know he's chuffed about. It. He says no seriously you're going to start seeing some weird shit. <laughs> And it's, then you really do start seeing some weird shit in the film. Because it's Pac-Man when he accepts it. Oh my god! I think that's also before the the jump gate sequence as well, when you really do see some weird shit. <laughs> Fucking hell! Everyone's faces start warping. It's like a kind of funhouse mirror version I of physical spent reality. The whole sequence laugh is so funny. <laughs> Oh. Rocket just looks like some kind of like squished. He looks like, he looks like that freaking that thing after, that's after the walnut from Ice it Age. Looks like, <laughs> like his eyes just started bugging out. It looked like a live action Ren and Stimpy bit. Yes! Is what it looked like. Oh, a great description. That sort of animation style from like 90s, like Nickelodeon MTV, weird stuff. <laughs> just, yeah. Messed up shit. That was the other visual effects thing, the, 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 the visual thing rather than the implied thing that freaked me out. Was when Ego reformed when he was getting the upper hand. Yeah. And it just started as like, you know, like sort of the, the, the atoms and the nervous system in light and then the skeleton. Yeah. And then it just slowly started to grow everything that made him look like Kurt Russell again. All at this point, like fucked up zombie Kurt Russell. Like, yeah, pale as anything. He, he looked pale after that and sort of Because he's been weakened and yeah. he's, he's just like, oh man, but that just looks so cool. It's building him from the ground up with the inevitable, like everything getting screwed over. Um, like everyone's fucked at this yeah. point. Um, James, I think you know you know how like certain auteurs and directors have like little things they put in all their films. I think James Gunn's his tentacles. Oh, he loves his tentacles. He loves his tentacles. He even in tentacles. this, even in this, we get some tentacles made of rock and light. Yeah. Like they're in there. They're still in there. He bloody loves them. And we, um, we also get tentacles at the beginning with the obelisk. Yeah, with the of course. That was, oh god, great! It's but... hardest to pier- uh, thick to pierce. I'll have to do it from inside the creature. <laughs> it's like. The hide is the same thickness from the inside as out. I know. <laughs> what does he think? <laughs> oh my god, so good. <laughs> why would it be? Why would it be less thick from the inside? Um, just get that great shot. Of just stabbing it. Just stabbing it. Oh my god. Just, just pounding it. Um, um, yeah, the whole Mr. Blue Sky musical sequence. Oh, wow. The music's incorporated. So all Brandy, of course, gets the biggest. Yeah, that's basically a plot. What point. a fine girl. What a good wife you would be. And it's just like, oh, okay. Uh, the reveal of his wise mum's really dead. Freaking horrible. Yeah. The opening shot of the movie's great as well. It's just the car driving down the highway. Yeah. In Missouri. And, and, and getting to see sort of some Meredith in a prime. And... Yeah, not like sick and dying. Like, yeah. We get to see the young girl who fell in love. And mm-hmm. it's just like, oh, it's so cool. Uh, all right. Uh, here's my live IMDb. I can't be asked to do it myself. All right, on second viewing, I noticed. Ah. But when they were running down the hill... Uh, into the woods behind me. Um, 
Yeah. Beyond the restaurant. Yeah. And the, uh, what restaurant was it again? It was, uh, it was uh, uh, Dairy Queen. Dairy Queen, that's it. Because, of course, you had the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, 70s, 80s version there. And then you got the uh, uh, modern day version. Try the, the DQ. Uh, the DQ. <laughs> Try a banana split. Come on, DQ. We're like a banana split. The DQ. Yeah. Ah! When they're running down the hill, she's wearing massive Ugg boots. Because, yeah. obviously, they're running down the hill. And then there's a prominent shot of the flower and their feet next to it. And she's in little heels. Ah! It's like... <laughs> I'm only not, I'm only noticing this because it's my second viewing of the movie. Brilliant. Um, but yeah, if I had if I had the time, the inclination, or the desire to waste precious moments, I'd type it up on IMDb. Fuck it, leave it. In. So if you guys want to waste a precious moment for me, head to Goofs. How um, dare you make a continuity snarl in a film this complicated? <laughs> All right, then. If you want to talk continuity, time framing. If this movie set in 2014, how can Stan Lee have been a FedEx man? Let's talk about the five post-credits teasers. Um, well, that's technically that's in the film. Yeah, well, that's true. Well, that's yes, but, but, but we'll talk. We'll tie yes. it in with the because um because also like oh, oh oh and David Hasselhoff take a shot when he appears at oh, a weird moment man. that is visually done really well but awkward because it's a really like dramatic moment <clears throat> and you're like yeah. now's the Hasselhoff cameo. Also, is ego tied to David Hasselhoff in some way because he looks like current day David Hasselhoff when he transforms? <laughs> Peter Quill must have been like. Aside from screaming in agony, yeah. it must have been like, "Who's that? Who's that dude?" <laughs> That's not David Hasselhoff. Um, but Hasselhoff on the soundtrack as well. They're having a little cameo in the credits as one of the stickers that moves and well, he, talks. He's we deep. are Groot. <laughs> yeah, we are. Uh, oh Christ, <laughs> David Hasselhoff would do anything if he paid him enough. That's true. And First, which is po- not very much, by the way. Oh God. First post credits. Um, uh, Kragelin is carrying on with the with the arrow. He's got. He's got. He's got, he's, arrow, he's got yeah. a fin like. Um, Yondu. Like Yondu does, and he's practicing with the arrow to Drax, poor Drax's um, bafflement. Yeah. Um, what was the next person? The next one was. Whoa. Next one's another. No, the next one was the the original Guardians. That was it. Yes. So they all team up because we see them all individually at the end, and I was like, Charlie Twenty Seven and Mainframe and a Well, well I was like, Star-Hot. that's Ving Rhames. Like, yeah. you don't get Ving Rhames for a one off. Michelle line. What's going on, Michelle Yeoh? It's like, what is going on? And then at the end, you get a post-credit scene where they're all reuniting, including Miley Cyrus as the voice of um, Mainframe. Mainframe, uh, which they'd mentioned before, and someone said, like, someone had seen the credits, and they went, "It's James Gunn." I think it was an interview. Miley Cyrus is in this movie. And you went, "Yeah, she's got a very brief appearance." It's like, "All oh, right." And afterwards, people were like, "Well, fucking Miley Cyrus in the movie." <laughs> it's like she was a voice. She was the voice of Mainframe. Because um, <laughs> again, like another interview since then, he said the reason why is because when he, they were in the early stages of casting, he was sat watching the voice one night, and she was a judge or a guest judge, or whatever. And he just was like, "I like her speaking voice. It's kind of slightly odd." <laughs> so the approach to agents went, "Would she like to do a line for a character that might come back?" And they went, "Yeah." yeah. And she came, recorded a couple of variations of the line. Done. She, Ving Rhames, Michelle Yeoh, Sylvester Stallone, all got upcoming gigs. Because the original Guardians form, minus Yondu. Well, minus minus loincloth uh, wearing a bow and arrow elegant Yondu. The original Guardians reform. Yeah, well, that's, yeah. Good point. I wonder how they're going to do that. But they've, they have said since that, oh, yeah, you don't cast these people no. to just have them be a throwaway thing. Like, we're going to see more of them. Yeah. It's like, yeah, we better do. Um, including Good. one of them. <clears throat> Who's the red... Um, one with the multiple limbs and everything. Oh, I'm not sure. I don't know my original guy. But doing well. magic, wearing a sling ring. Oh. Did you notice it was doing cantations? Yeah, yeah. So, in one fell swoop, there's the implication of... Because this is the thing. This movie very much exists in a bubble. It is a sequel to Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. It is not a, a movie in the MCU in terms of its overall it, thing. It, it goes against... Because usually <clears throat> the MCU movies... They take place in chronological order, in release mm. order, with the amount of time passing in in the universe as does in the real world. This one, the rest of the films. This yeah. one takes place a couple of months, the same year as Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, so around the same. If you wanted to put it in the MCU, it's sometime after the Winter Soldier. Yeah, basically that's that's pretty much it. Um, but what was really nice about it was uh, Dingle Dangle Dingle Do is that it still made a reference to the last movie that came out. And one of the next ones in the credits. Yeah. So that creature in the the group was doing oh, Doctor Strange esque um, incantations with the same magic and everything, the hand movements and a sling ring. Yeah. And in the stickers, the little graphics of people dancing in part of the credits, Jeff Goldblum as the Grandmaster was there. Yeah. 
obviously teasing Thor Ragnarok later on, which is the next technically Marvel Studios movie to be coming out. Yeah. Um, so that was nice. I saw him there and I was like, oh, he's got to be in the next credits sting then, surely. No, nope, they just threw him in there. Yeah. They obviously must, he must have been like on set the day they would do getting that footage. Yeah. And just yeah. went, can we film you and put you in the credits? Uh, uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. 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 Yeah. Mm, Sydney um, sausage. Um, uh-huh. So, What's it? The next one was Teenage Groot playing video games. So Groot is growing yes. up. So I guess that takes place a little while after the events of the movie. But yeah. Groot is growing up a bit more, and Star Lord's basically become the boring like narc of a dad, telling him to stop playing video <laughs> games inside his room. <laughs> so that that's oh, nice because that man. that implies to me that in the third one we're going to get Groot Groot again. We're going to have a big Groot, which I think is smart. Like to to have him yeah. be different in every movie would be a bit stupid to deviate for one film is nice um i wonder if they're going to go make him a bit more comic booky though and have, have the tree like the branches a bit more spiky and a bit more prominent well we'll see we'll see but i have no doubt it'll get redesigned again yeah um probably so yeah uh, vin, vin diesel didn't have many lines in this movie did i think he said i am group maybe three times four times <laughs> i'm sure i'm surprised they didn't just like go into the bank of them from last time and go yeah that's appropriate that's appropriate quick put a filter on it um, then second to last one, yep. or third to last one, or whatever, was the um, oh god, what are they called? The, the sovereign. Sovereign. Um, leader of the sovereign has gone against the rest of the council to use their. I'm gonna want to call it the loons. It basically <laughs> is, isn't it? Yeah. To use Pretty their birthing much. pod technology to create uh, to create new life with the specific di- directive. Of taking out the guardians, and mm-hmm. she's going to call him Adam. Freaking Adam Warlock. Adam, motherfucking Warlock. Now, Guardians Three would be coming out after Avengers Four, so Infinity War Part Two. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be seeing Adam Warlock in the Infinity War movies, despite the fact they're obviously heavily drawing on the Infinity Gauntlet and everything. Yeah, because Adam Warlock's obviously tied quite heavily into all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think he's going to be. I think he's probably going to be the antagonist or something <laughs> akin to that for Guardians Three instead. Yeah, maybe. Which I'd be fine with. I'm cool with that. Maybe because we already te- he was already teased in the the post credit sting of uh, the last movie. Because it was a cocoon that looked like a fleshy version of his pod. Yeah, which is the, the, the comics thing. accurate one. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, who knows? Maybe that was their first attempt. Possibly. Trying to create new life. Possibly. The collectors acquired it. Because uh, uh, it was so. hatched in the post credit sequence. Um, and then let's talk about the final credit sequence because it ties into the, the, the hopping bit in the film. I really love that way of transport, actually, as well. The idea that like you can hop to different sectors yeah. of space at certain grid points. And it appears like a little really like honeycomb, and it's like one of them is just a door. Mm-hmm. You appear through. I think that was a really cool idea. That's explaining how certain species can travel vast distances. Yeah, it's like oh yeah, if you if you if you if you're um, logged into this thing, then you can just pop through there, and it'll take you a certain distance. And also, how uh, how Peter's presumably going to get back to Earth at some point? <clears throat> oh God, yeah. Well, I, no, that's a good point. Yeah. Oh, pothole. Okay. Well, we'll see. Um, <clears throat> but, but they know where Earth is because they can jump to it. Unless Earth isn't registered. Maybe that's why. Uh, he knew where I Ego mean, was. He had Ego there. in his mouth. What's the thing? E- mm, yeah. Maybe. Because they've, they've, they've not got the Milano anymore. They've oh, got, of course they've got the Ravager ship. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, that's, maybe that'll be part of the, part of the third one. It's the Milano 2. Bring it to Earth, son. Milano 2. Um, Milano 2. Milano, 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 Milano part 2. Um, so the watchers are in this movie. Yes. And it, when it when it cut to like with the wide shot of them, I didn't realize what I was seeing because I was too busy being overjoyed with the other person in the scene. But then it did a reaction shot of one of them, and I went, "Oh my god, it's a watcher! It's an actual watcher. Bald, big baby head, yeah. white eyes, big blue cape. Yeah, they, they're doing the watcher. Like it's a watcher. Yeah, there's a group of them. That's amazing. For those who don't know, the watchers are a species who sort of they're they're, they're like signed to different quadrants of the universe, really, aren't they? Like there's one for every. It's different multi. It's different. Um... Well, they, well, they span they span multiple universes too. But like the, yeah. the, there are several in each universe, but they're sort of very. It's very rare that you'll see them no, all together. As I, as I understand it, each un, each universe has its own watcher. Right. Okay. But they do they hone in on where the most sort of 
prominent stuff in that universe is. Because Uatu lives on the moon, doesn't uh, he? Yeah, yeah, basically. Uatu's our <coughs> watcher. Yeah, he's our uni- and he, he's not he examines Earth's watcher. us. He's our universe's watcher. But, but the Earth's moon is where he yeah. kicks up his heels and Cause all the has, interesting a, stuff has a beer and stuff. Yeah, exactly. And he he, so he sometimes appears to um, members of the Marvel Universe like in a vision or like they, he can be seen from a distance before something cataclysmic is about to happen. Yeah, he, he, will, he will appear... Um, he will he will appear at moments <clears throat> of of great significance. Yes, yeah, so was it was it um was it just before Captain America's death? Like Wolverine saw him some at the end of Civil War or something like that. Someone sees him. So he he turns up at the end of Civil War. Yeah. Um, the first time he turns up is when Galactus arrives. In, yeah. In Fantastic Four. Yeah. Which is amazing because <clears throat> it's like oh god, that's, uh, obviously the character there are a bunch of characters who don't know who he is. You might just be like. And then the thing happens. Yeah. Was obviously some who know who he is see it as an, an omen. They're like, oh shit. Something either really excellent or really horrible is about to happen. Pretty much. Um, <clears throat> for, the, for those who are talking on Doctor Who parlance, yeah, he's basically the Watcher. Oh, yes. <clears throat> he's just the Watcher. He's, show, he's, he's there, he's watching, ready for something to happen. It is, um, it is the end. Now, a bun- moment is prepared for. <laughs> Now, Watchers have... No, really, it is. They they, they film for cameos. Yeah, no. Uh, The Watchers do convene occasionally. I've seen that in a comic somewhere at one point where some of them have been in council. Because I think Uatu's seen as a bit of an outsider. (sighs) Yeah, he is. Oh, that's why. Yeah, because Earth is a favourite of his. Yeah. So he's sort of a bit of an outsider. Um, But yes, that's part of their deal. Turns out, they're friends (sighs) with somebody who I assume they probably give lifts to. Like, they help him. They, they, They let him see different things. Like they don't speak in the footage, which is quite right. The Watchers don't, don't really talk. They're, they talk. they're not talking. If they talk, they talk telekinetically or in narration boxes to the reader in a 60s, 70s comic book series they're not called What If. Um, God, they are, they're, so good. They're, they are for one page. Yeah. I am a Watcher of the Watcher. I am a Watcher. What would happen if the Punisher, Frank Castle, had died that day and his wife had survived? If they've not done that one, they should. Well, what, uh, they um, probably have. What would ha- they, I know they did one where it's like, what happened if Aunt May died instead of Uncle Ben? What if Daredevil became an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Yes. Some of them are a bit ambiguous like that. Yeah. Weird, isn't it? Um, yeah, there's like a sort of House of M ones. Like, they do one shots of it every now and again. Like, I think House of M is on mini. Uh, my daughter, Age of Ultron did. Yeah. Age of Ultron got a what if, which was I think a couple of stories. Yeah, yeah. A couple of different versions over the that course one. of um, ten issues. Uh, so there's that. But, um, yeah, their mate Stan Lee, and I think Kevin Feige has said it this week in an interview that, oh no, Stan Lee exists in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Sure, he's not the guy who created the comic yeah, books between his characters, but he's Stan Lee. And they haven't outright denied that he may in fact be a Watcher. No, but um, if if he is or he isn't, he's at least observing events across the Marvel Cinematic Universe and possibly beyond. Possibly beyond. The implication is he's hopping time, space, and and um, dimensions to see some cool shit, man. Um, because cool shit. The ships slip past. He's like, what was that? Oh, well. Now, one time I showed... Was it one time I showed up as a... Um, no, this uh, this time I was a FedEx guy. Which is... This is what we said about time. Like, that's the future. Like, yeah, that's... Civil that's War's Civil the War. future. Unless he's done it to someone else at some point. Probably. Because at first I thought I didn't take the FedEx thing into note and I was like, oh, is he referring to being Willy Lumpkin, the mailman? Because <laughs> it would also explain why in the Fantastic Four movies from Fox, the the, the Fantastic Four Rise of the Super Surfer, he's two different characters. Yes. Yeah. He's, he's Willy Lumpkin, Lumpkin in the first one, which was an inspired little cameo. It's like, they're gonna, like, Willy Lumpkin's not a character you're really gonna have in your movie, no, no. but you've put him in and you've made him be played by Stan. That's amazing. Stan is now playing one of the characters he created. That is great. But then he appeared in Surprise of the Silver Surfer in a reference to the comic book story of Reed and Sue's wedding being yep. turned away because his name's not on the list. Stan Lee's <laughs> name isn't on the list. Which is obviously a reference to him and Jack Kirby being turned away in that book. Which in itself was just a cheeky nod to the writer and an artist. And, and of course book. he didn't bring Jack Kirby into it. Because <coughs> <coughs> Jack Kirby didn't call around the Fantastic Four at all. <coughs> Is Kirby still alive? No, he's dead. Well, that's probably the reason why he wasn't brought into it. I didn't know. Yeah, Rise of the Surfer was shot that, in 2006. I think, I think there was still a bit of, of friction that, yeah. you know, that, just, that Jack well, Kirby wasn't it's also easy the to correct work. amount of recognition for his yeah. work on Fantastic Four. Well, he is now. I think... Oh, yeah, yeah, Stan Lee's quite open nowadays about the fact that it wasn't all him. 
Not as open as some people suggest he should be. Yeah, right. but at the same time, like, <clears throat> what a crappy few last years of your life it'd be if you spent the, all of them just going... I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's, better to, it's better to do what he's done really now, which is celebrate the people he worked with and the people he collaborated with. He's doing a lot more of that. I watched his Larry King interview the other week for the Larry, King, Larry King's podcast, and he does his usual sort of, like, um, self-deprecating slash... I am the greatest thing ever. Yeah. Joke stuff as well because he goes back and forth between them. He's, that's he's, very, he's that, very modest, but he also brags. It's like, that persona in a fake way. That, that sold Marvel as an entertainment yeah. brand back in the seventies. But but then he spends a lot of it talking about the amazing people he's worked with yeah. and the amazing things they made, and you, you get the sense that it's like there's a lot of legality and there's a lot of regret <laughs> here, like yeah. all battling in his head. Yeah. And the best he can do is go these people created incredible stories and characters please pay attention to them yeah i did a lot of it but they did a lot of it it's a i am just i was the facilitator and sometimes the writer and creator these guys are as, as important and sometimes more important than me based yeah. on what book you're thinking of um i mean he's never shied away from the marvel method being Quite mostly big, written yeah. by the artist he, he just gave them the skeleton. I think in Jack Kirby's case, it was more to do with Jack Kirby's family not getting royalty. Well, that stuff is, yeah. yeah, that's, but, but again, like, there's a lot of stuff that's come out of that off the back of it. Like, I know, for example, like, if, if, if a piece of Jack Kirby artwork is ever sold now, like, in a big auction sort yeah. of scenario, um, the chunk of the, there's a chunk of the profit that will always go to his estate yeah. and his family. Yeah. Which is great, because that should be the case. But even, even if it's not something that they've submitted, like, yeah. Marvel auction off yeah. a bunch of stuff, they, so, there is some recompense happening. I mean, Christ, it's still nowhere as bad as what happened with um, Superman's creators and DC over the years. Jesus Christ. Yeah, wept. yeah. They, that they, that, that's a national case, but we won't get that into that here. We'll do a podcast about that one day. That, yeah, it's literally about a podcast it'll, it'll be, worthy. It will be fun to it. discuss the ins and outs of how horrific businesses can be. Yeah. And how you should always, if you think you're onto a good idea, you should always copyright a portion of it for yourself. And not do it under work for hire. Yes, good lord. Um, um, so yeah, but Stan's camera is really nice, implying that he is, if not a watcher, the watcher's like, mate. And they're sending him off to different universes and times and everything to see these things. He's the Watcher's pet. Yeah, I mean, you could look at it that way. He's the, he's their he's their funny dog. Oh my god, he's Cosmo! Quips. No, there's already a Cosmo. Oh, okay. Mind you, similar spacesuit. Yeah. I like the fact his spacesuit was like an old school sci-fi comic book look. Yeah. It was just this orange, orange and brown um, puffy looking thing with a big round yeah, Mysterio dome. dome. So that was really cool. cool. And then at the end, they all walk off on and He's like, fellas, you said you were going to give me a ride. Oh, <laughs> oh, gee. <laughs> fellas. Oh, gee. <laughs> it's just like, like Stanley won't swear. He'll never swear. This is a very sweary movie, I thought. It's, oh, it's well, only swearing. Yeah, they always they put the swear words in the mouths of Rocket um, and Star-Lord in particular. Yeah. Um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of penis talk in this movie as well. It's, it's not bad. It's not half bad. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> My... Um, what was it? My lower region would engorge at the sight of it. <laughs> no, like, do you have a penis, Drax? It's like, what? Like, he's he spawned you. Surely he must have a penis. Like, why would you ask that? Yes, Drax, so, I have a penis. It's not half bad. Oh, it's <laughs> <laughs> cr- so good. It's called ego, and yet he's really modest about the, his, the about, whole, his, about his cock. The whole film <laughs> is just even when it's dealing with the serious family stuff, which yeah. is very well done. Mm. It's just joyful which is the biggest takeaway from the first one it's a joyful movie yeah and so and this continues that trend it just takes such pleasure in being what it is where do we stand now do we because we were talking the other week about like the three marvel movies which one we're most excited about and everything for me i think i think thor ragnarok's still the one that's going to blow me away but i think that's just because the mix of the visuals that the, the amalgam of characters involved and taki watiti's like look on it all yeah. is what's got me um but after watching this, I'm like, you know what? Thor is Thor's, Thor's really gonna. It is gonna have to work to be. Oh my God, favorite. is it? Is it? Because Guardians has set such a nice template, and as long as Spider Man Homecoming still has a bunch of surprises that Sony trailer people it won't. haven't spoiled. Because Sony tra- Sony trailer people are terrible. Christ, we like we won't do it here, but we need to chat about some Sony stuff. I found out some stuff the other day that just made me wince in 
terror. Oh, and it's God. to do with Spider-Man and the people behind oh, what's God. going on. Oh, no. We'll get into that another time, though. But um, how about you? Do you is this... Because I think this was the top of your pile, wasn't it? This was the it one was, that you're yeah. looking forward to the most. Yeah. Do, you, do you think the others have got to work hard? or I think I think Marvel have, have set a hell of a precedent for their other movies this year. This is... They're starting real fucking strong. Mm. And if, you know, if Homecoming and Ragnarok aren't as good as this movie, they're still going to be pretty fucking great because this was excellent. True that, true that. Now, uh, we'll get out of spoiler territory and go into the emails, but uh, there's at least 20 seconds before I want to do that so I can mark the time code. So let's pretend we're finishing a really big spoiler for those who skipped ahead. Uh, I'm going to let me squeeze it out. Okay. <laughs> 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 And of course, it's hilarious, oh. the scene where Groot, where Groot's just lay there and he gives birth to all of those little saplings. <laughs> and they've all got their own catchphrases, and oh, that's my favourite scene, yeah. where Groot gives birth. It's going to be a merchandise. And, and Rocket eats one of them. That playset, <laughs> that playset is going to be the hot toy come Christmas. Oh. The Groot birthing playset. Oh, with edible babies. <laughs> Now, it's time for your emails, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. It's time for your emails. What have you been saying? What have you been, what have you been sending to us through your mind, through your eyes, through your neck? Guess who's been in touch again? The Lewis feds. Christian. The feds. He's working yeah, for him. He's, 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 he's the feds fam. Um, <laughs> he's the feds fam. Two emails. <laughs> two emails from Lewis Christian. What? This is the first. <laughs> With an unpronounceable title. Good lord. The body simply says, in all caps, do not endorse the views of Lewis Christian. He reviewed Smile before it aired. He was wrong. Apology transmitting. Apology transmitting. Sorry, 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 sorry. Message ends. Cool. So he he liked he liked Smile. He liked Smile. In a in a further email, he goes on to elaborate. Yeah. Hello, Big Dan Matt and Little Darned Chris. <laughs> I am a Little Darned. I really Like loved, a pair of socks. I really loved the episode I prefer to call The Frost Fair. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's talk about Thin Ice. Doctor Who, Matt and Chris. Reluctantly um, talk about dirty little, dirty little dirt dirts. It felt like a throwback to the RTD era in many ways. I really dug it. And it's the first Capaldi episode in a very long time that I'm immediately wanting to rewatch and enjoy all over again. It felt like proper Doctor Who to me, whatever that is, and I couldn't be happier. More episodes like this, please. Also very intrigued to find out who is knock, knock, knocking on Nardole's door. Knock, knock, knocking on Nardole's door. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, series 10 is creeping up <laughs> week by week. I'm enjoying the character dynamics, the 12th Doctor, the pacing, the whole vibe of the show. Only three episodes in, arguably three average episodes, but it's a massive step in the right direction. Lots of big damn love, Lewis Christian X. With a smooch. Um, do that. Yes, the nice. I really, really enjoyed. Me I too. think it's been the best episode of Doctor Who we've had in a while. I agree, good sir. It, like you say, RTD sort of vibe to it, but at the same time, um, I don't know, like, it was nice because it was the RTD vibe, but the visual style of the Moffat era, especially the later Moffat era, where it had that sort of cinematic sheen to it all, um, it was just good. It, again, I, I think a good Doctor Who story. Um, like, not necessarily true for all of them, but for the most part, good Doctor Who stories you could picture happening at any point in the show's run. Like, switch out a different Doctor and companion, for example. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, in terms of, like, good Doctor Who stories, I not, think, not I think stories that, about the Doctor. That one, you could pop, pop the, any yeah. of them out, put another one in. I think the feeling of RT, the RTD feeling was, was a good shout from Lewis there. I think, yeah. I think he, 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 he yeah. Like, to take, take... Adequate description. Stick stick Eccleston and Piper in that. It'd work. I'm blowing out your ass! Stick Colin Baker and Nicola Bryant in it. It would work. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's a way that you could do it. Have you been reading my fan fiction? Yes. <laughs> stick Colin in it. Stick man sweat. And stick, <laughs> and stick Nicola in it too. He was also... Naked. <laughs> um, Victory should be naked. So... 
And it was, because Thin Ice was great. It was naked. pretty great. But, it wasn't uh, naked, but I'm but glad it was we great. took this journey with this version of the Twelfth Doctor, who I'm liking a lot. Yes. And Bill, who I'm really enjoying being in the presence and of. The Doctor got to punch a bigot in the face. Oh my god. It was great. Have you seen the complaints about that online? Why? A lot of people say like Doctor Who, like, I don't wanna I don't wanna sit my kid in front of a show where the doctor is punching people to solve his problems. Part of the reason I love the show is because he uses words and it's like no. At a certain point you, you can't argue with people anymore. But that's the thing, you've missed the point. The Doctor prefers to use his words. He is not afraid to get stuck in if he has to. If people are going to die, he will kill the thing that's going to kill them all. And he doesn't he... want to, but if that's the solution, he'll do it. That is a thing. This is established from the very beginning. Furthermore, you are inadvertently defending the racist whose face he's punching. Yeah. Punch that Don't punch that man face. in the face. But don't punch that horrible racist in the face. Well, the Doctor doesn't... This is another complaint. Like, well, the Doctor doesn't see colour, apparently. Like, he doesn't see race, which is part of what's wonderful about him. It's like, no, he doesn't see it in terms of, like, his connection with people. But he sees bigotry. He still acknowledges yeah. it. He acknowledges what's been said about her is horrible. He's not going to be like, why would you call her a monster? That's not a nice thing. Doctor, he's doing that because of racial predator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I understand that. No, he gets that. He, yeah. The him not seeing race thing that has been brought up a few times in the story is more about him saying, like, oh, no, I don't judge people based on who they are, where they're from. I don't see that. Yeah. Because I'm a freaking alien. I've seen everything. Like, I accept everyone. Lots Everyone's of pla- great. Lots of planets have a Scotland. Exactly. Um, They're always trying to become independent. <laughs> good child actors. Yes. Good yes. child actors. Child actors where the children weren't just fed up at everything. I mean, they were for a part of it, but <clears> not everything. And I wonder, the names, especially the lad, because the lad's name was called out a lot. The lad's name was Spider. I wonder if that was a nod to um, Woman in Black. Because the dog in Woman in Black is called Spider, and several times characters go, Spider! Spider! And I don't, I don't, it's a very obscure reference for me to try and draw a comparison to. Yeah. But as soon as I heard them going, the girl going, Spider! I was like, why am I thinking of the Woman in Black? Yeah. And I'm like, it's because when the dog goes out into the bar. I mean, I'm always thinking of the Woman in Black. On and off. Well, she's always there. It's like, mm. Every time you see her, a child it meets a terrible end somewhere. Oh, no! Um, yeah, oh, God. And oh, in this case, my God! In this case, one ends up under the lake. Um, but, right. but in a good way. Um, that was another thing, too. Something that's annoyed me, we talked about in past episodes, is I hate the whole... The, tr- the trend that started in recent years of the show of, oh, it's not really a monster, it's misunderstood. I want some villains. Guess what? We got both of those in this. Oh, boy, did we. And it worked. Like, having both was good. We had a big scary monster and little scary monsters that are living off of it and probably feeding off of it and stuff. We got that. It was it was an animal. It was a whale with krill. Like, it was, a, it was an ecosystem. It was a thing. We got that. I'm a whale! And it still could have done some damage. There was a risk letting it go. It could have stomped up through the ice and just, like, eating people. As so there was well th- you should. As well you should. There was still a threat from the creature. It wasn't like Hyde where you find out that, oh, no, it doesn't actually do anything to you. Or, like, the siren because of the black spot. Oh, it doesn't actually do anything to you. It just looks after you. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But, they were we, a bit weak. but we also got a baddie. We got a boohist villain. We got a guy who was letting people be fed to a monster and die just cause. Not a lot of comparisons have been made to the beast below, but in the beast below, there was it was less of a oh we have to feed them to the beast. It was yeah. more of a like this is just the way it has to be, and we don't want this to la 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 blah blah. It's a secret. It's a horrible secret. We're all having to harbinger and all the societies involved. No, in this, it was a nasty man going. Yeah, that's fine with me. And a bunch of people working for him. Not so much the people at the plant, but the, his lackeys who were also like, yeah, that's fine with us too. Mm. His plan at the end was to blow up the the frost fair yeah. and kill hundreds of people. Yeah. Like. There was a villain, played by Nicholas Burns, who yeah. did a damn good job. Yeah, oh, he's so um, detestable. So He's detestable. great. He's so good. So punchable. He is, he's very punchable, isn't he? Punchable in the face. He's a good, he's a damn good, he's yeah, a damn yeah. good actor. Even if every time I see him, I always think of the first time I saw him, which wasn't Nathan Barley, funnily enough. Every time I see him, I immediately think of Boosh. I think of, it is I, the king. <laughs> um, I always think of that whenever I see him in everything, which was really weird because I nearly burst out laughing when I saw him in Ghost Stories because he, he was in the cast of that tour at the end of the original run. Mm. And I nearly pissed myself laughing out loud because I was like, <laughs> um, so yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, he was in the original, yeah, because you, you saw Ghost Stories, didn't you? you saw I did see Ghost Stories. Art, art, I saw the arts there. Yeah, he yeah. played the, the dad in the third story. Okay. The businessman. Oh, okay. And he was really good. Um, oh, it, was, okay. it was when Reece Smith took over from Andy Nyman. As the main thing. Yes. Um, worked really well. But anyway, enough, enough, enough tangents. I really like Thin Ice. I really like Thin Ice. And I like the tag at the end. 
I like the fact that Nardole has... They either have talked this thing, or they know it. Or, like... Because the way they was talking to it was sort of like, oh, you, as long as I'm here, you're not going to get out. Oh, yeah, that's because he's the master. Maybe. No, I reckon it's the master. Well, no, if it was the master, I think they would have been a bit fan wanky, and it would have been four knocks, not three. We'll get to that. Yes. Uh, Tom Monty! Tom Monty and the man with the Monty, the man from Del Tom Monty! Says, how did you christen that? First, I'd like to We're start. all right, Tom. How about you? I don't Wait, start. Let him answer. I'm very well. Oh, Tom, I forgot about your unique tones. How are you, Tom? Sinister voice, Monty. I'd like to start off by complimenting that on his excellent Tom Monty impression last ah! week. Oh, it God. really aroused me. Oh, that's all right. My penis has just concaved back up into my body. Forgive me for the length of my thoughts. I won't be too saddened if you skip straight to my questions for the podcast's sake. <laughs> As for episode three, you said last week that your thoughts would come out in the email section, so feel free to comment on the points I bring up instead of me directly asking thoughts on the episode. I hate to admit it, but my opinion on Asbill might have changed a tad from obnoxious to slightly bearable, and I wouldn't go as far as to say she's worse than Clara. I like how Asbill actually questions everything, and it was this story said in the past that made me like that aspect about her because I would probably be asking similar questions. <laughs> and I also preferred her hairstyle in this <laughs> It's weird how that's such a nice compliment and yet that voice is making it sound haunting. I don't like it being massive and <laughs> bushy. It's because you know it'll make her a terrible action figure. I'm not saying I like her. She's still pretty annoying to watch at times. Like when she was crying about that boy. Pearl Mackey isn't very convincing for me in the crying department. And a lot of her <laughs> comedy feels contrived, so I still look forward to Chibnall's disposal of her. Alleged. We don't know. Also. We just think so. <laughs> a key factor that made me originally dislike her was her feminist comments, and this week, despite it... Not being as in your face, we still got one from Asbill when she comments about the Sutcliffe heir being boy. Not that I'm anti-feminist, just that I don't want these comments rubbed in my face every week, if you know what I mean. Tom, on a serious note, I have literally no idea what you mean. Yeah, I'm not picking up on it. Um, <laughs> as for episode three itself, the Doctor really shone through for me, and I can't remember the last time I really appreciated his on-screen presence. This made me quite sad for Capaldi, because it made me realise that, in my opinion, he hasn't had a fair share of better-than-average scripts during his tenure. And I feel like he's finally settled in. I think I know who Twelve is now, just as he's about to leave. I did have a few issues with the episode... But I think this is inevitable with any episode of Doctor Who in its current state. The fact that when they saw the boys had in the water, it, it cut back to the scene with that boy as if it thinks his audience is stupid, and cut away from Bill saying shit. If you're not going to hear it, why leave it in? This felt forced, and I don't know how I feel about the racism. I'm not saying I don't appreciate it. It's good that we're keeping it historically accurate. With the fact that Bill was called a creature... I'm not sure this was a suitable word, and as good as the costumes were, I thought they all looked a bit too clean, new, especially with the urchin, <laughs> and maybe too colourful. With the what, sorry? Too colourful. The urchins. <laughs> I just had to hear that again. They could have worn them down a bit, and I thought Sutcliffe's death was a bit gimmicky. On the other hand, I did like that we saw effective psychic papers usage once again, and I am really liking Capaldi's Tom Baker-style flash of the teeth that we saw quite a lot of in this episode. And! <gasps> did anyone else notice the <clears throat> Eccleston reference when the Doctor told Asbill where the wardrobe was? And! I was pleasantly surprised the episode actually killed the child, and how the Doctor really didn't give a fuck about it, and grabbed his sonic instead of the boy's arm. The reason I was surprised was because I think I'd just assumed that all of the ice victims somehow weren't dead, and the resolution of the plot would be the Doctor saving them all and the creature, but no, the script has balls in the killing department, and props to Sarah Dollard for that. I hope Chibnall realises that disposal is not a suitable option for Sarah. Overall, I know it wasn't a very original idea, i.e. the beast below. But I really enjoyed the script this week, therefore making this my favourite episode. 
since heaven sent questions yes as for the vault scene i think i might have heard four knocks right at the end thoughts predictions about this scene have you watched any of the series ten episodes live so far because i haven't i player is proving very useful oh god that's so creepy what are your thoughts he's on... doing hands now as well <laughs> like he's doing creepy hands what are your thoughts on next week's episode <laughs> knock knock <laughs> Have a splendid week. Thanks, Tom. Tom Monty. Stop doing that. <laughs> um, oh, he just left. That's really weird. I'm looking forward to Knock Knock. I'm looking forward to Knock Knock. Mostly for David Suchet. David Suchet. Um, and the Haunted House stories. Kind of cool. Like a, 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 mo- a modern story. Haunted House story in Doctor Who is quite a cool idea. The last time we got a decent sort of comparison to that, I suppose, would be Blink. Blink would be a modern Haunted House story. Yeah, really. That's close um, to that. We got a bit of Haunted House and Hyde, but <laughs> so there's that. I would agree. I think I think you need fresh writers for series eleven onwards. You need fresh writers. I think you need fresh music as well. I think a lot you, of things need to change. Everything needs to be fresh. It just needs a page one ground up start from the beginning. But, but Sarah, Sarah, Dollard Sarah right. Dollard's just got started. Yeah. If you want to keep her, go for it because I think this is a pretty damn cool script. Um, I agree because this is technically her first script. Really, Face the Raven was heavily influenced by stuff she had to put in, so she basically scrapped most of her original concept aside from the Trap Street. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> so it'd be nice. It'd be nice to see more stories from her. Um, damn, you've thought a lot about it, Tom. Yes, <laughs> yes, more than I have. Um, we know. I, have we watched them all live? I, I I've watched, not watched the, any of them. Uh, I watched the first two live. No, I watched. I watched um, Thingy live. The, the thingy. First, oh, Thingy first. live. The pilot. The pilot, yeah. I saw the pilot live. No, did I? No, I don't think I did. Oh, God. I think I've watched them all on the iPlayer because that's much my, that's the way my life works. Yeah, I was out... Um, funny, I'm about to drop him in it. I was out eating food with Billy and Dan on Saturday when the episode oh, was on. no. Yeah, we, we, we chose... Oh. We chose food and good no. times uh, as opposed to watching the episode live, but I caught it. I watched it that night when I got back up. I played it and enjoyed it. So um, yes, I won't be I won't be seeing this week's live. I'll be at a family party. I so. will not be seeing this week's live either. But I watch everything on iPlayer because man, fuck TV. Um, <laughs> next week's episode, knock knock. I uh, yeah, it's gonna be good. <laughs> Vault scene, four knocks. No, I think it's just the editing. Uh, I, I think if they wanted to make that a clue, they'd they'd really play it in. I think it's the master because because that would that would be more intriguing, really, wouldn't it? If they if it did four knocks, that was it because they'd know that. Casual, casual TV viewers and stuff would go, "Oh, some at knocking," and fans of the last ten years ago, "Oh, it's the mask." Do you know what I mean? Like they'd be more, they'd make more of a tease of it if it was a definitive four knocks. Yeah, I think it was just the way it's like it started knocking more frantically and it cut away to the next time trailer. <clears throat> um, but yeah, yes. Now this next email comes in, <sighs> narrated to us. By the real Paul McGann. <coughs> what? Hello, time travellers. Oh, hello. Shock of the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is out, and Alien Covenant on the 12th of May. I guess we are now in summer movie season. My five emoji review of Smile. Big grin. <coughs> okay, simple. Was it... The thingy, thingy face. The board face. Recycle. Is this Paul McGann or James Mason? Question mark. <laughs> James Mason. <laughs> Remember, Phoenix? Phoenix? Alarm clocks. <laughs> Doesn't make it any easier. <laughs> five, five out of ten. My proper group of the nice. Nice, pretty snow and flesh out. Seven of ten. Question below. Would you rather be the dragon from Quest of Camelot and you two are both share a dragon body? <laughs> Or travel with Clara and Maisie Williams from the Game of the Thrones as me in their American diner TARDIS for five years. <laughs> Here's my little drawing of the week. I'm sorry. <laughs> so long. Oh my god. That's from Ian. Hello, Ian. Oh my god. That is... 
I mean, for starters, deep cuts referencing freaking Quest for Camelot. <laughs> I, I, it, I'd share a dragon body. It, I'd share a dragon body. I would be Devon to your Cornwall. I'd, I'd, I'd go halves on a dragon body with you. I would be I would be Devon to your Cornwall. Devon but, to my Cornwall. But those, those are their names, Devon and Cornwall. That's amazing. Played by uh, Eric Idle and Don Rickles. Oh, so we're not going to get a reunion now. It's a terrible movie. It's god-awful. But as a kid, I ate it up and got a bit older and then loved it because it was shite. Um, but I would I would rather share a dragon body with you than um, than be with Clara and That's Maisie Williams. Because at least we'd get on. Yeah, know? pretty much. We'd, get on, we'd watch the same stuff. We'd share a body. We could, we could work out a system. <laughs> we could work out a system. <laughs> we could work out a system. But there'd be no working out a system with the Maisie Williams and the Claras. No. Oh, God. Because they'd be anything they need to be for our particular adventure, whatever it'd be, it'd leave oh, us in the shit. God. Um, <laughs> finally, mail of the week. Finally, mail of the week. Alex Barker. As I live and bark. Yes. Um, <laughs> Is my bark worse than my breath? Let's not make fun of the poor person's name. Let Stop in, it, Chris. Let us enhance it. Hey, hi, Chris and Matt. Hello, I'm Mr. Just, Back, eh? I just started listening to your podcast, and I'm really enjoying it. Thank you very much. Do either of you have a gaming PC? If you do, what do you enjoy playing? Mm. I'm in my second year of A-levels at school, and exams are about to start, and they're really hard, and I think I'm going to die! Don't die. Don't, there's more, to, there's more to see afterwards. What did you guys do for your A-levels, and what grades did you get? And have you got any advice from Alex Barker? First of all, I'm not going to assume your gender, because I don't know if you're a man or a woman. Um, but to answer your questions, I don't have a gaming PC. Yeah. Um, I can play some games on my PC. I, back when I, back when I did have a decent enough PC, I played a lot of the original Deus Ex and System Shock 2. Mm. I messed around with getting Fallout New Vegas and Skyrim working on my new PC, but they don't run very well. I've messed around with a bit of Marvel Heroes 2016, but now it's about to come to PS4. I'm not really fussed. Um... But yeah, I keep I think thinking I should get a decent game PC, but I I just don't have the money to get a rig together. What about you, Christopher? Uh, I um I am um, I mean I'm not I'm not I don't mean to brag, but I will wipe the floor with you at Minesweeper. Um Seems legit. I uh I can kick your ass at Solitaire, which is tough because it's a one player game, but I'll what, still kick your ass. Is there multiplayer solitaire? No. Because that oh. defeats the point of solitaire. Listen, soli- but also listen. The, the most, exp- the most, the, the furthest I've ever gone towards having any form of gaming PC experience was playing the Blade Runner point and click adventure game oh. on the Windows ninety eight. Oh, on yeah. the Windows ninety eight. On the Windows ninety eight. Oh, I played a bit and of Jedi Knight. Although Jedi Knight was good. That was good. I've never played. I saw it. And, I saw well, that Dark, played. Dark Forces two. Jedi Knight and Dark Forces three. Jedi Knight two. Jedi Outcast. Yeah. And Dark Forces four. <laughs> Jedi Knight three. Jedi Academy. You haven't lived until you've played World Cup 98, the Windows 95 compatible edition, mm. on a plug-in controller that you had to pull the PC tower away from the wall to plug in. That sounds pretty good. <laughs> on a Windows 95. That uh, sounds no, I th- The problem with the PC is, Lou and I have talked about maybe investing for her office in uh, like a, ma- a, a Mac, you know, a desktop. Oh. Um, mostly because for design stuff and for business things, it'd be easier so that we have like a bank PC that we could use that was also higher performance. But the problem with that is, she really thinks that if we get a get if we get a PC in the house, she'd rather have something that would also double as a gaming PC. And then I'm like, well, that'll defeat the point of you ever doing any work in your office space. Yeah, well, because she will just she will disappear. Sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, maybe one day. I'm I'm a jealous of you in a way. Yeah, Alex, I'm jealous in a I, way. I could I could I could gaming PC it. But... Oh, we the best people to ask about A level advice from. <laughs> no, we're <laughs> literally the worst people to ask for advice on A level from. We we both have A levels. I kept dropping out of college and starting again. Well, technically, that actually makes you more qualified to talk about it because you have a breadth of experience with the A level and AS structure. We both get we both got B tech nationals. Yeah, we're both wanky performing people. Yeah. Um... <laughs> What courses did you do in full life? If you're up for I divulging, did the performing arts I'll play, course. I played bingo and then dropped out. Then I did music and music technology A levels with the side of drama and then dropped out. And then I did musical theatre and then actually went to drama school after that. So you basically rocked it. Yeah, the third time was the charm. But third time was like the charm. You picked up shit along the way, and that's the thing. With I picked up well. all shit along the way. That's the thing with college as well. Like it's not like you're chucking away shit ton of money if you go. Oh, you know what? This isn't for me. I'm gonna restart again. So. Yeah. Boom. That's what university's for. <clears throat> yeah, precisely. Um, um, yeah, I, I did. 
performing arts, uh, BTEC National, um, and did AS film studies. But by the time second year rolled around, I dropped film studies because I was doing that much extracurricular stuff with performing arts. But I just wanted to concentrate on that. And I picked up media studies yeah. for a while and dropped it like a fucking stone because I mm. knew more than the fucking tutors did. <laughs> Not saying anything. Um, um, so, yeah. Uh, it's... Uh, our advice, I suppose, would be if, you, if you're enjoying it, you feel you're benefiting from it, get everything you can out of it. If you're not, maybe rethink taking it, doing something again. Um... I'm never a massive advocate of study, 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 because I think you just need to do what you know feels right for you. My advice is don't sweat it. Experience yeah. trumps qualifications every time. Getting experience is the hardest part. So yeah. just, that's that is very that's the thing. Like yeah. Keep, unless you're taking away from it, that piece of paper at the end is pointless. Yeah. If you're feeling like you're working towards what you want to be working towards, then you're doing the right thing. However, you do that is is, is kind of up to you. But experience, like I say, experience over qualifications. Stay in school, kids, unless you don't want it. In which case, that's fine. As long as you're doing what you need to do to get towards where you want to be. Yes. Speaking of which, uh, it's time I gave you that blowjob I owe you. So, we're going to call it a day. Um, okay, one of those things was a lie. <laughs> oh, God, we're going to keep recording, aren't we? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get in touch with us and ask us for worldly advice like uh, Alex did, or... Don't do that. Talk nonsense, then, uh, or ask us a Doctor Who question that we reluctantly answer. Feel free to do that. You can hit us up at any time. Big Damn Cast on Twitter. Big Damn Contact at gmail.com for emails, for elongated emails, which we'll read out in probably the voice of your choosing. And uh, uh, I, d- I, do, I do a mean Christopher Walken. Um, not, Chris- no. not, not just a good Christopher Walken, I only do a mean yeah, Christopher just Walken. Yeah, nasty Christopher Walken. Nasty Christopher Walken. Just being a dick. It's very different from the normal uh, setting. Oh, what? Yeah, oh, wow, get out of here, you son of a bitch. Yeah. There you go. Um, uh, uh, wow. Um, and of course, if you want to collaborate on any nonsense or bollocks, you can always send things to big damn tum- the big damn blog dot tumblr dot com. Download us on iTunes, watch us on YouTube, we've got new shows coming up, sunshine. Oh, on no shows! Get your eyes around them. The first, the first Big Damn Love crossover, technically, is happening. Yes! This weekend, so give that a watch. Uh, it's not the, not how you'd imagine. Um, but yeah, other than that, I'll leave Matt to play us out on his um, armpit trombone. I can't play the armpit trombone. Shit. See? Shit. Nothing, I mean, he's nothing. trying. Don't he's don't trying. Don't sound actually. I'm not... Christopher Walken in the Country Bears movie. Come on! <laughs> what do you think I am? Deep cuts. Instead, I'm going to bring to you our new segment. Oh? The PS2 Cheat Corner. Wait, what? This week, yes. cheats for Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 on the PlayStation 2. Oh. Secret skaters. Go on. To unlock each skater, finish career mode the number of times indicated using different skaters and getting all goals and gold medals. <gasps> complete it once to get Darth Maul complete it twice to get Wolverine complete it four times to get Officer Dick complete it five times to get o- Office uh, Private Carrera complete it seven times to get Ollie eight times to get Kelly Slater and ten times to get Demon S the secret levels <laughs> eight unlock each by completing career mode the in- number of times indicated using different skaters and getting all goals and gold medals what is happening three times for the warehouse six times for Burnside and nine times for Roswell what is this Bonus movies. No. Watch the Pro Bales tape by getting any three medals. No. Watch the highlight tapes by getting three gold medals with any character but to get a special video of that star in action. But they're in solo res. Watch Pro Bales 2 tape. Grab three gold medals with a custom skater. I don't understand. Unlock by completing career mode what a number of times indicated using different skaters and getting all gold and gold medals for the following bonus items. Nine more seasons, Morty. Snowboard Nine more seasons. for 11. One, 12 for a constant special, 13 for perfect rail balance, oh, 14 for super stats, oh, 15 for giant skaters, 16 for slow-mo, 17 for perfect manual balance, 18 for tiny skaters, 19 for moon physics, 20 for expert challenge, and 21 for first person skaters. That's what I'm doing. I miss my children. Go to the cheats menu in the options menu to enter the following codes. Enter back door to unlock all cheats. Baby, I'm sorry. Now start again to pause it, then select the che- cheats option and press X to toggle the cheats on and off. Tell the girls I love them. Unlock all movies with Peep Show. Oh. Unlock all skaters with Yo Homies. And unlock level select with Road Trip. To unlock the Neversoft Eyeball Man from the oh, intro God. sequence as a playable character, Neversoft finish the career man. mode 21 times, That's getting sweet. 54 goals and 3 gold medals with all skaters. 
Is it me or That's it for the PlayStation 2 chips. Chips? Blitz and chips. Corner. Blitz and chips. Blitz and chips, corner. (laughs) If you have any tips for your favourite PlayStation 2 games or any requests for the ones we should look into, send them in to us at BigDamnContact at gmail.com at BigDamnCast on Twitter and we'll find you the hottest cheats and the sickest codes. Wicked. It's 2001 all up in here!